Chippewa hockey is on CCHN. Oh my goodness! The place to watch men's division three. Here's Connor Morgan out and quick quick pours on the East Guys! And women's division two. That's gonna get a shot and go and she scores! Every shift, every goal, every game. Central Michigan has turned the corner. All in one place. CCHN, your home for Chippewa hockey. Back on home ice for the first time in 2024, CMU is looking to exercise some demons. They are on a five-game losing skid, but tonight they welcome in a visiting crosstown rival, the Oakland Golden Grizzlies of the MCHC East. Hello, everybody. Welcome inside the confines of Chile Martin Ice Arena on this day. That video you saw was from spring. Don't worry. It is not actually uh, grainy grass outside. It's freezing temperatures. And, hey, pinch hitter tonight, my partner, Parker Morrison. Good to have you on, my friend. As always. CMU is coming off their fifth straight loss to Oakland University. They lost 5-1 to one yesterday in resounding fashion. Oakland led by as much as four in that game. They were able to amass two power play goals, one shorthanded goal to lead the way for CMU tonight. They're looking for redemption and to avoid their first six-game losing streak since 2014. Now, Devin, they really are, and you mentioned how many matchups Oakland and CMU have had in the past with Oakland winning five of those last ones. And you can't even blame the Chippewas. Oakland has always ranked uh, near top of the leaderboard in the ACHA, and they are here again today, ranking number 12 uh, as CMU will go to face them. But they've always been a very heavily offensive team. We're looking to see that again tonight out of the Oakland Grizzlies, and CMU's just got to stop on the defensive point, stop the defensive zone, clear the zone. That's how they're going to win tonight, Dev. Speaking of those new rankings, last night the fifth rankings out of eight for the entire season were released when we saw a lot of shakeup within the top 10 to top 20. Remember, top 16 go to Nationals. Let's break that down for you. Grand Valley State for the fifth time straight is ranked number one in the country. The Lakers tied with Calvin University, who was at number eight last night. As of this morning, they are ranked uh, within the top 15 at number 11. So they dropped three spots looking down at my screen, of course, because these were so sudden. They were brand new to us. Florida Gulf Coast at number two, followed by Lawrence Tech at three. Missouri at four. How about that team out of the Mid-American Conference yeah. has really come to life. They took down Arkansas last night, who's ranked in the 10-number spot, uh, followed by Hope College at four. Air Force making their presence known there at six, followed by Michigan State, Dartmouth, Colby College, and Arkansas. What a top ten. Last week we saw the likes of Calvin in the top ten, Michigan State. Saginaw Valley dropped all the way to 16, and you see where it is. They're playing today a number 12 team in Oakland, but they were 11, so just one spot. And, Devin, you look at the top of the ACHA. CMU, if you're a fan of CCHN and have watched here before, we've seen those number one and number two teams in action against us already. You've seen what they can do, and you've seen how much of a powerhouse of a team that they are. So today you now look at Oakland and what they've been able to do yesterday. You bring that over to Martin Ice Arena, and you take all of those teams that we've faced before now, and you're just trying to kind of whittle down what we can take from taking or from facing such vibrant teams in the ACHA at the top of the leaderboard. CMU hasn't had an easy road to our record current standing. It's yeah. been a hard it's been a hard couple weeks and especially ending the last semester facing the number two and number one teams in the entire ACHA. So we look to do some sort of wave here today. If you count the series against Saginaw Valley State, they have lost as many as seven straight against ranked opponents up to this point. Again, five-game losing skid they're on right now. Taking a look at the MCHC East standings, Lawrence Tech at the number three spot sits at the top. 11 games, 10 wins in the conference, one tie to their name, 21 points, a record of 15-2, 1-1 overall. Oakland slots in at the number two spot after the win over CMU to jump Saginaw Valley. Six wins, two losses, one tie in conference play. Saginaw Valley State, four wins, one tie. They sit at number 16. That is the bubble spot to get into ACHA Nationals. Central Michigan slots in there at the number four spot. 3-3, three, 2-1 three, 
in their conference. Michigan at 3-3, 0-0. They have not played a lot of conference games yet. That's why they'd be so low. Adrian at the uh, sixth spot, followed up by University of Michigan Flint and Northwood. Some games tonight to look around for the ACHA. Saginaw Valley at 16 takes on Michigan. Last night, Michigan won in overtime, 3-2 over the Cardinals from uh Arctic Edge, Canton. Tonight they're going to play in Saginaw Bay Ice Arena. Uh, followed up that one uh, at an 8.30 puck drop. Meanwhile, Missouri takes on Arkansas. Number four at number 10. Arkansas lost last night 6-4. to four. Remember, Arkansas last year lost to Michigan. That's true. And that was the key win that got MS or the Wolverines into the final four, eventually beating Hope College in the final. Followed up by Calvin at number one, Grand Valley State. Number 11 against one from uh, Eagles Ice Center. Last night they tied 2-2. What a result for Calvin that might just put them in to get into Nationals. Ties do count in the rankings period. Some other notable games going on around are um, Hope College against Nebraska. Last night, Hope won 5-1, to one, as well as trying 7-0 over Indiana. We're going to step aside for just a moment and get you ready with the rest of our pregame show. You're listening to it live here on CCHN. We're back with you for the pregame show presented by CMHIceHockey.com, your one-stop shop for highlights, exclusive interviews, and full-game broadcasts of men's Division Three and women's D2 action. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so as to never miss a moment of Chippewa hockey. Just go to YouTube and search CMICHICEHOCKEY.com to find the channel. CCHN, your home for Chippewa hockey and Parker 
Uh, taking a look at the two teams here today, CMU with a record of 6-10, 2-1, and 3-3, 2-1 in the conference. They are on a five-game losing skid. The last time that happened, you have to go back all the way to the 2018-19 season where they dropped five straight in that regard in the beginning of the year. This is an uncanny territory for a team that has seen so much playoff success the last couple of years, and their goal-scoring wars continue is the biggest thing. Outscored 36-6 to in their last five games. They have had six different Chippewa score in that span, the likes of Bottles, Campbell, Bemis, Siraki, Kielb, and Jay Nadu. But it's the first of full weekends remaining in this season, and if you're looking at a team that's ranked like Oakland, boy, you're in the toughest skid of your season right now. Absolutely, and we look at Oakland, ranked number 12 now, as we mentioned in the first half of our pregame. They're 16-5, 2-2 with 48 points. They had back-to-back -back OT wins, uh, or go, oh, excuse me, OT games against SDSU. They've played in seven overtime games. Most of them have been MHCH teams. They have wins in their three of last four games against U of M Flint and SVSU, and their biggest win this season has been an 8-3 win over Hope College. And you look at where the Hope College stands in the leaderboard, that's huge for a team like Oakland. Five different goal scorers against CMU, Deneau, uh, St. Marie, Chippa, and Fanau, and McCaddy. McCaddy had a very, very important one for them last night to put the Chippewas with the nail in the coffin for them. But, Devin, the series history has not favored the Chippewas. They yeah. have 14-4-1 all time, and they split in the regular season last year where OU won 4-3 in the first round of the MCHC tournament. Yeah, they have won three of the last four matchups, and that key one you just talked about being uh, in the MCHC, we thought for a moment that was going to be CMU's season. They were ranked at 17 on the outside looking in. Thankfully, Creighton had to drop from the top 16 due to financial concerns, and CMU got the call from National and said, hey, come down to be the 16, and they got in. Didn't win any games there either, but the point is it got them to that point. So taking a look now for our next uh, point to make is you look at this to uh, you, going back to the season, his series history, right? Outscored 45 to 15 uh, years ago, okay, 2018-2019. Uh, their biggest loss during that span was 17 to 5 Sioux College. And I'm talking about a year where – they had some concerns with the coaching position. There was a, a big story about around this team with thousands of dollars being uh, enveloped from them, and they had to sit out for a lot of games, had to scramble to find players. Uh, they're not in a similar situation right now, thankfully, but it is a tough road for them. I have to ask you, what do you see out of this series where it seems like it's been all one side and not much the other? Well, we look at Oakland's previous experiences, not only in Nationals, but throughout just their entire program history. They've always been a team that's competed at such a high caliber level, and now we look at Centro, who hasn't always been at the level of Oakland University. The series history has been phenomenal for Oakland, a tough road for CMU. If you're a Chippewa fan and you want to turn that around, you're going to have to make a mark tonight. That's where you need to go. You end up losing five straight to an Oakland team. That's going to hurt your morale the next time you come around and you face the Grizzlies. All right, well, we're going to take one more break. Come back with you quickly for Parker's key players and keys to the game, as well as some of the scratches. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to the pregame show live on CCHN. CHN, your home for Chippewa hockey.
the pregame final segment of the pregame show here on CCHN. Parker, let's get to your impact players for both teams, starting with the home team. CMU needs goal scoring badly. We talked about it a lot in this pregame. Who are you looking at as someone to make an impact? The biggest person I'm looking to make an impact tonight, Devin, is number 27, Nathan Bottles. He didn't play last night, and we need him tonight. He's been a big impact, not only offensively, but as a leadership standpoint. We saw last night we didn't have any of our main captains out there. That hurt our leadership tremendously. I go now to number two, Andrew Porzondik, number five on our team, and he's been influential offensively. You saw him have endless shots on goal last night, and as Derek mentioned on the broadcast last night as well, getting shots on goal is going to really help us tonight to just try to get something off, get some goals on the board. And number three, number 71, Nadu. He's been amazing on the faceoff. He won almost every single one he took last night. And not only that, he had some beautiful, beautiful score, cha or score chances and some great, great playmaking abilities. Andrew Porzondek notably had an assist on the only goal yes, for CMU. Yeah. Owen Campbell and Jay Nadu. Nadu was credited with the goal, his third of the year on a tip shot from the right wing circle. And Bottles, his first time missing a game as a D3 Chippewa. Yep. The last time he was scratched was when he was on NCAA Division Three, Arcadia <laughs> University. Looking at the other side of things, who are you watching for Oakland? Well, the number one player that I'm going to watch for Oakland tonight is actually not Chippa. It's going to be number 10, McCaddy. Jake McCaddy, more specifically, the 5'10", 160-pound freshman from Ira. He's a rookie, Devin, and he has he's on the top five of the leaderboard for Oakland. If you look at their website, he's got uh, 29 goals this, or excuse me, 29 goals, 29 points in total this season, and he's played tremendously for a rookie. You saw his playmaking abilities last night, and not only that, his stick handling abilities. Number two, we will put number 21, Evan Chippa, for the Oakland Grizzlies. I mean, you just got to give it to him. He's one of the best players on the team, if not the best Oakland Grizzly, and he played phenomenally last night. And the last player to watch for the Oakland Grizzlies is number 11, Dano. Again, same thing as Chippa. He played tremendous last night and really helped them to achieve their 5-1 to victory over the Chippewas. Finally, what is your keys to the game presented by Optimex Sports? CMU has got to stop the forecheck. That was one of their big issues last night and something that they need to do tonight if they want a chance at taking down a tough offensive Grizzly team. Number two is clearing the zone. That's something that they struggled with a lot last night and getting the zone cleared on them, especially on power plays, they weren't able to capitalize on any besides one. And the third one is continue hammering the offensive zone. Again, like I said, they weren't able to capitalize on any of the power play chances last night besides one, and that was the only goal that we scored last night. Last night for the Chippewas, if you hammer the offensive zone, as Derek said last night, get some shots off on goal, try to put something in the back of the net, you're going to win the hockey game. All right, thank you. Those were Parker's Keys of the Game, presented by Optimex Sports, your one-stop site for all things club hockey websites. Make sure to give our friends at Optimex Sports a visit if you want one free year of use and all of your ticket sales, all of your rosters and schedules and more posted. Let's look at some scratches for Central Michigan. Notable ones tonight, Andrew Siraki played on that third line with Beamish and Gilgren. He's replaced by Nathan Bottles, the assistant captain, returning after being scratched last night. Isaac Hopp will slot in on the fourth line with Luke Vasilovich along with Andrew Miller. So Vasilovich, Hopp, and Miller will take up the fourth line, and Austin Ritter will slot in as the extra forward. Other scratches to note in this game, Will Rapoon, number nine, number uh, 20, or excuse me, number 28, Christopher Martin, the captain for the Chippewas out of this lineup. Uh, Lauren Jones saved uh, 36 on 41 shots last night. Did a good job in that effort, so he will get the night off. We'll start three goalies. The starting netminder will be Caleb Woolery. Backing him up will be Zavelson and Nick Wilson. Ryan Grolo, Chris Armantrout, along with Brandon uh, Clements will make up the rest of those spots. We're going to take the final break before we get ready for puck drop. OU and CMU renew this long historic rivalry in this MCHC matchup. Coming up right here on CCHN, you've been listening to the pregame show presented by CMHIceHockey.com. Don't go anywhere. Puck Drop is next from Martin Ice Arena.
Welcome back here inside Martin Ice Arena. We'll take you through your starting lineups. Devin will have that for you. However, we're going to go to the goalies first. For your Central Michigan Chippewas, number 35, Caleb Woolery will be starting as your netminder. And we'll go now to the Oakland Grizzlies. Again, another Caleb, this time number 31, and last name Godlewski. 
He'll be starting in goal for your Oakland Grizzlies. Devin, take it away with the lineups. Thank you, Parker. Starting lineups tonight. First for the visiting team, Oakland gets their top unit with Brendan Dano, who, or Dano, who was the team leading goal scorer, 17 on the year out of West Bloomfield. He's out there along with Evan Chippa, number 21, and Jack Abbo out of Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. The defensive pairings will be Reese Williams, the freshman, former teammate of Sam Kamara and Connor Morgan of Orchard Lake St. Mary, and Thomas Monty, their veteran senior. For the Central Michigan Chippewas, they'll turn to the second line. The likes of Brent, or third line, Connor Beamish, number 12, Josh Gilgren at center, followed up by Nathan Bottles, returning after being scratched last night. The defensive pairings will be Kyle Bowerson and Sam Kamara to start us off for this game. As we are ready for puck drop, a quick update for you after warm-ups. Braden Kielb is out of this game. He suffered a uh, injury during the warm-up period. He has been replaced by Will Rapoon, who was originally a scratch. So Rapoon in for Braden Kielb. He will slot in at the defensive pairings with Kyle Robertson. So as we get ready for game number two, CMU trying to avoid their first six game losing streak since the 2014 season. Meanwhile, Oakland University, newly ranked number 12, is looking to continue their momentum in the Nationals. As we get ready for puck drop at center ice, we are underway here from Martin Ice Arena for the first time in 2024, Oakland. Gets the first draw into the attacking zone. Followed up the wall this time, played by Brendan Dano, who had himself an assist last night in the 5-1 to win over the Chippewas. This one turns heel back to the other zone. Josh Gilgren in there deep, the birthday boy, two days ago out of Atlanta, Georgia. Meanwhile, Oakland is able to regain possession of it. Reese Williams gets to it. He's the one to put it to the wall. Pucks loose in the slot area. Picked up one touch pass by Williams out of the zone. It's going to be Kyle Bowerson to chip it back for CMU's first change of the hockey game. Now, Devin, we've seen a very physical play from Oakland and CMU last night. We're going to hope to change that up. Stay out of the box is a Chippewa fan. Stay out of the box is the key. They allowed two power play goals on four chances last night, along with one shorthanded goal. So this team that has struggled all year to keep it out of their net when it is a man down. They're one of the top teams in the penalty Getting margin, ranked top 10 in the nation. This one is sent back by Schultz at the red line. Deep to get it is Jace Johnson, who nearly had a goal last night, still looking for his first as a Chippewa. The leading goal scorer of the MHSAA ranks last year at Riverview High School. This one is flooded on the backhand by Griffin Geertz. Up the wall, the defenseman gets back to the puck in front of the PA stand. This one will go back and forth with it. Both teams still in the filling out process. CMU will go get their top line out. The likes of Andrew Porzonic, Jay Nadu, and Owen Campbell, the only goal scorers for CMU. We just Lucas saw Hutton. Owen Campbell take the uh, puck there off a little poke check, a very beautiful play by him. He'll go down to the offensive zone. Porzonic tries to get something off. Meanwhile. CMU keeps it at the line by Rapoon. A last minute addition after Keel was registered as out of this game after warmups. Borzani at the half wall, keeps possession to it. Robertson flutters one in on net. It was deflected off the skate blade of Porzani. Flutters up to the wall, first touched by Abbo. will keep it out to center and tag up with Peck. They'll get onside, a shot from the point, flutters wide of Woolery. The freshman net miner in net was scratched last night. Brendan Martin said yesterday to our very own Derek Steele that the net mining decision to put in Lauren Jones for his third start was about effort and earning it. And he said that Woolery earned this one tonight. He has put three goalies in the lineup. The first backup is Zavelson, the second is Wilson. This one's touched by Robertson, who has a chance for a break. He's got Owen Campbell down the right wing. He tries to evade a pressure. Duncan McLeod took him to the wall. Gets in on that backdoor score! Campbell for the second time this weekend. Gets the first goal in the first three minutes. CMU, one nothing. Devin, you saw him come down the left side, get hit, roughed up more than three separate times. Fought through it, right-handed stick zone, into the slot, a beautiful goal to put it away. If you're Oakland and you are Caleb Godlewski, what are you gonna do in that instance? There is nothing that is stopping the Chippewas. Holy smoke, CMU is not a team that often scores first, but when they do, they have a record of 5-2-2 two, and two on the year. We just talked about in the pregame all of the goal scoring wars. They have been outscored heavily the last couple of games, as many as 36-6. to six. But they get the first blood from Owen Campbell. What a job that was to get to the zone. And the backdoor stuff. You're seeing Oakland play a much more man-on-man -man style defense right now. They're just trying to adjust 
for the lack of scoring that they've been able to achieve in just the first four minutes of the first period, Devin. Kyle Robertson out of Livonia, Michigan gets the assist, his fifth on the year. And a much needed one as this Oakland team handed CMU their fifth straight loss last night. The first since 2018. There's a sharp angle from the right wing by Beamish from one knee. That one was saved by the netminder, Godlewski. This one from the point flutters through the wickets. Oh my, Godlewski got down on his pads and that one just turned wide to the right post by Messina. They'll tag up at the wall. Gilgren from a sharp angle off the right iron. This one's intercepted and nearly bottles on the back door trying to roof that over and missed. Gilgren keeps the line. Great first three minutes of this game for CMU. They've got Oakland on their heels right now. One nothing is the score from Owen Campbell's eighth of the year. Assisted by Robertson. Fresh changes for Oakland's bench as well CMU. Touched up by the assistant captain Monty. He'll lead this one ahead. Intended the pass. For Dylan McMullen, that one hit the stick blade of Schultz. It's Messino who roughs up his man against the boards. He'll just flutter this puck ahead for Schultz, who lifts it into the air. One touch saucered by Johnson, has Connor Morgan on a breakout. Here, three on two to Velas. A shot on Godlewski, never got there by Morgan. Trying to slutter it to the slot area. Turnaround shot, blocker save. The rebound chance, and that one's into the netting to stop play. Parker Morrison, CMU came out with an emphasis in this game, you can tell, and they have been getting a plethora of chances on Godlewski. Well, their line shifts have been merely unintelligible. Devin, they've spent most of their time now in the offensive zone. They've gotten shot after shot. And a nice face-off win as Chase Johnson trying to take one on net. It was blocked off the skate of Evans. Out of the zone comes OU. Kyle Giza to carry it through wing. Dropped it for Evans, who just dumped it. This one will be one-on-one. -on -one. Check to the boards. Robertson, his man, on plant. Intercepted. Robertson, good toe drag to get that out of harm's way. He'll butt and hook and rebound to come up left wing with speed. He's got Johnson on his wing, gains the red line, dumps it in, needs some changes, and on comes the top line for CMU, Camp Bellinadu. McCaddy forward of this one. Tic Tac passes, Davis. Will lead this one with Nadu in hot pursuit. This one played up the wall by Campbell. Trying to poke check Davis who falls to a knee. Still tied up the red line. Rapoon came in to finish it. Camara's back there to get to it. At the end boards, it skirts in front. Intercepted by Porzondek. Leads one ahead for Campbell. Too strong under his wickets and he'll bounce this one off the wall. Porzondek in deep to chase in after. McLeod gets out of harm's way for now. They'll get over the blue line. Coming with speed is Davis. Takes a shot on net to no one. That one didn't get through. The former CompuWare AAA product. Now a turnaround shot. That one redirected and just missed the right post. That was more dangerous than it looked at first as Sharp, Alexander Sharp, was ready for that. Campbell in front. Turned over. And now the Grizzlies with their own sort of forward check. Not many stoppages in this game. 13-37 to go. First period, CMU struck first from Owen Campbell. Looking to get their first win in two against Oakland University. Campbell took his man to the boards. Wanna call as the OU bench. They're not gonna get one. Dumped by Nadu to get fresh changes. On comes the fourth line for CMU. Hop, Ritter, rather Miller, and Vasilovich. And they try to fight in a flurry to the slot in Oakland's zone. Backhanded out of the out by Chip. Messina. A lift in the air. Quarterbacking this, drop pass, shot on that, saved by Woolery. Flutters to the end boards. Trying to free it up is Messina, can't get to it first. Here's Evan Chippa. Had three goals on the weekend against Saginaw Valley, including their overtime victory, four to three. Ranked number 12 in the country. This one is gonna go down the ice for the icing, first one of this game. 12.42 to play. What do you make of this pace so far, Parker? Well, Devin, you got to go to the keys to the game. They're the keys to the game for a reason. I marked down the fact that CMU's got to stop the forecheck of the Grizzlies. They've done nothing short of perfection in that standpoint tonight. 
the defense has been much more substantial for the Chippewas thus far, and it's only been eight minutes into the play as Grizzlies will take the faceoff. Look out, quick shot off the faceoff. Ready for that was Willery. He was great in the early part of the year, particularly 1-0. They lost to Michigan State in his debut, and he looked terrific. Since then, he's had some tough games. Florida Gulf Coast, most notably, he got pulled along with the Grand Valley Series. But since then, he's gotten another start tonight. This one flutters wide to the left post. Another try from a sharp angle. That one went off the back iron. That is off its moorings. The referees are letting them play. Now it'll come out to the blue line and they'll stop play for that. So CMU will get some changes on for that reason. And Woolery, a netminder that although hasn't seen a lot of action, has been great in his own right. And on the other side of things, it's Caleb Godlewski out of Rochester, Michigan. Record a 4-2-1 on the year, a 2.92 goals against average. 0.911 save percentage, only started two games for Oakland last year. And most notably, he started one of those two games against uh, Hope College. I believe he was in for the eight to three win. So they've got four formidable net miners on Oakland's side. Pretty much that's the name and the number you need for a roster at this point in the ACHA, four goalies. And CMU's been floating their personnel as of late a lot. Last time they started two goalies was Sam Zavelson before the Grand Valley Series. Here's Will Rapoon, the last minute addition, trying to forward it for Gilgren. He turned it over, got it back after the back pressure by Beamish took away the chance for the streaking Fanuf. Bottles trying to free this one up. He'll drive right post, toe drag swag, gets inside, shot, save the first time, rebound kicked out. What a move by Bottles. First game he misses a Chippewa last night. And he's coming back with an emphasis. What a move to get to the net. It's tied up under the wickets of a trio of players. Beamish frees it up. Off the bench comes Morgan. That one from a tough angle. Bounced off the end board. Up the far wall. Carried out by Knighting. In hot pursuit is Morgan. Drop pass for Phaneuf. Lost the tire. Here come the Chippewas the other way. Jace Johnson trying to get inside. Loses that race for the puck as McLeod came for the back pressure. It's Sam Camaro, former teammate of Reese Weiss on Oakland side out of Orchard Lake St. Mary's. This one's forwarded by Giza. Up ahead for Plant over the line. He'll drop it off for McLeod. It takes a slap shot. That one had to be savvy with the blocker save. Woolery into the air. Gloved down by Giza at the wall. He's pushed hard into by Schultz finishing his check. The other way, here comes McMillan over the line. Getting hooked on the play is Giza. I've not seen a call in this game yet. 10.23 to go, halfway through this first period. CMU up 1-0 off Owen Campbell's lone goal. Jace Johnson tracks it well off of the wall. He'll take it up alone. He's got Morgan up his left wing. Loses possession for just a moment as Plant pushes him to that corner boards. That's the toughest area of the ice to work is that right corner. That's where the doors meet the Zamboni. Robertson up the wall, one touches it for Morgan, intercepted by Evans. Gets this one up for Plant, he'll one touch it and go off for a change. As will CMU, Robertson tags up with his deep partner Camara. wasn't ready for it under the wickets, it's intercepted. The other way, Alexander Sharp turns around the net, tries to get it back up to the point. Campbell stuck with him the whole way. Great defensive play. Jay Nidu might have a breakout if he gets to the puck first. He's got it up the right wall. Looks for room to work around behind the net. Gets pushed up by Fanuff. Rather check that, that was Williams. And they try to get to the slot area for Campbell and he couldn't come back. Here come the Grizzlies. McCaddy over the line, takes a shot wide. Poor Zonic first to it. This one flutters around. Touched by Bowerson. Williams. Did a good job settling that down for McCaddy. He'll rim it around the wall, force Woolery out of his crease, and he'll slow that play down. Messina, the assistant captain, the only one was disqualified at the end of yesterday for a spearing penalty on Jules St. Marie. He was sent off, not a double major, so he stays in tonight's lineup. I was looking at a disqualification. Sometimes that results in a one game suspension. Here's Reese Williams, a talented freshman defenseman, will rim it up the red line wall. Lucas Hutton, the other talented freshman out of Novi, Michigan, former captain there. Glove down by Messina, trying to settle this one. They did for Davis, who got to it first. Tommy Davis takes a check by Messina. Hop can't find it under himself. Now it's 
taken by Messina, through center, backhanded forward. Geertz will just say, give me that puck. Retain this. They'll kiss up with it, double players. Well, Devin, <laughs> this has been a couple seconds that we've been battle marinate. against the horse. I, I know. Listen, listen. It's ASMR, isn't it? <laughs> a little bit with the ice bikes that we got down there. It's a nice song. Here's Isaac Kopp to the slot area. It's free. It's played out by McCaddy. Boy, Oakland was in that corner for a long time. Upright wing. Here comes Evan Chippa. That one taken on net for the easy whistle seen by Woolery. 7.39 to go in this first period. What a fast pace it has been to this contest. Well, Devin, not only has it been fast paced, but you've seen the defensemen for Central Michigan come out strong. You've seen people like Lucas Hutton, number 22, throw his body on the line. He's throwing himself down on the ice to cover the bottom pad for Caleb Woolery, and it's been working out. He's got a couple saves himself. Yeah, and you know, credit this CMU defense. It was taken away the sharp angle area. Look out, it's loose in front. Woolery, first try, second try on the right pad, found it. Holy smoke, we can't even get his compliments off. He had to be savvy. Bottles trying to take this one up the ice. McLeod, spin around move. And up Wayne Gilgren, just the dump and chase into effect. Connor Beamish will be there first to it. Finishes that check. Sailed ahead for Chippa. Over the line, back pressured by Abo. Takes a shot on that, easily saved by Woolery. Up right wing. To the top of the slot, shot, save, kicked out to the left corner. Deno to the cycle goes OU, chip up behind the net, pressured by Robertson. Falls down to the ice, no call as Robertson for a moment thought he might have tripped him up, he didn't. And they'll play on. Up the far wall, Abo cycles down to Chippa, behind the net, Robertson. Good stick play, get in the way. Rapoon, undersized but not under-efforted. This one on the short side, kicks out to the left wing, shot! That one just roofed over the corner. At the point, it's kept in, looking for a tip in front and none coming. Stick flies into the rafters, that was Danos. And he gets it back now, Rapoon up the wall. Not able to keep the line as Oakland, a much needed change. A tired group out there after the last minute and a half. Over the left blue line, Dano takes a shot on net, that one easily missed. Jace Johnson, the talented freshman, will button hook around his own end. Stop on a dime, waits up for pressure. Now gets help with Morgan. He'll streak in, evade one defender. Now two, takes a far check. Schultz in after it. Hemmed in by Camaro. He'll look to get it up, right wing chance, Schultz. Another try by Johnson on the short side, doesn't go. Up center ice, Knighting. Against Bowerson, one on one there. In the near corner, two players on both sides. CMU gets to it first. That is a great example of this entire first period right there. You get two players in the corner, you stay man defense, and you don't allow them an easy setup on the cycle. And Devin, they've been playing physically, but they've been playing smart physically. They haven't taken any useless penalties thus far. I think that's helping them out here. Absolutely not. Robertson looked to intercept that as Knighting couldn't handle it. He'll go off for a change, and Campbell, nice nifty move around the legs of Phaneuf. He gains the blue line, one time clapper, missed the net wide. Ripped around the far corner. Porzondek trying to feed that one to him. Up to the point for Messina. Check that. It was kept out by Kachi. And they'll gain the trapezoid. Forward this one for Evans. Brian Evans over the blue line now. Has help with Brody Plant. One on one trying to set Messina. Great defensive play by the assistant captain, but it's up and out of play off the stick of Camaro. Devin, there's been a lot of help defense that we've seen here today on the defensive standpoint. When one player messes up, it's another player that steps in to take the puck away and clear the zone. We've seen it countless times tonight where it's maybe gone off a stick, hasn't really gone tape to tape on the pass, or just tripped up on the play. Another defenseman, namely Lucas Hutton, has stepped in a lot of the times to clear the zone and help out his team. I think the best way to put it is Simi's been putting out a lot of fires. They've been putting out a lot of near breakoff chances where you win a battle in the corner, you get one cycle to the point, and they've either blocked a shot, intercepted a pass, or joined their own rush the other way. Brody Plant now 
tries to gain the red line. He will, not without Messina in the way. 4-10 to go in this first period. 1-0 CMU, a much-needed goal after they have conceded big. They've lost their last five games by four or more goals each. Outscored by as many as 33-6 in that margin. Losses to number two, Florida Gulf Coast, number one, GVSU. Not a tall task or an easy task for any team in this league. Certainly not these Chippewas who are trying to break a five-game losing skid. Over the red line, Hutton will be the first to it. Oakland gets wholesale changes. He'll push it up on a pass for Vasilovich that missed. That was intentional, trying to get their own changes. OU, out of the right wing, McLeod. Will evade pressure. Gains the red line, his own dump and chase goes. Out of the net, Woolery to slow it. Here's Robertson in the corner. Working over Davis. Turns heel to the other side, bottles one on one. Rapun with the back pressure, gets inside positioning. He'll leave help there for Robertson. Bottles in good positioning, up the wall, good chip out. This one's touched by McLeod. Settled down for Tommy Davis. Red line chance, evaded wide of the left post. Gilgren forwards this for Bottles, who has speed, but a lot of defenders in his way. Sharp angle shot off the stick of Godlewski. Seen by Sharp. Intercepted by Morgan. He's got speed and help with Schultz. Off the stick blade, Schultz to a dangerous area, trying to get that through the defender's legs and it did not skirt the right way. Just bounced one too many times, but look at that. That's a great IQ play from Schultz getting to a dangerous area. Now this one is in the slot area. Morgan trying to take a shot off, he fanned. And Davis will put out that fire of their own. Upright wing comes Alexander Sharp. All alone, however, his team's changing. Bowerson will just poke check him, lift his stick and rim it around the boards. Schultz to it. Reese Williams for Dano out of West Bloomfields. Team leader in goals, 17, 30 points. And we've got a whistle, an offside called on Jack Abbo. And that CV bench is loving it. Well, I mean, Devin, they're up one nothing right now. How can you not be loving it as a Chippewa fan? This Oakland team took every last point on you last night, and now you come back in. You're 1-0 coming into what might be the second period. We've now got an offsides call, and it's it's gonna be hopefully the Chippewas that can take possession, clear the defensive zone, and they do just that. Well, I'm curious to hear your breakdown. You'll have it for us in the intermission report coming up next, presented by CMHIceHockey.com, your one-stop shop for highlights, exclusive interviews, and full game broadcasts of men's Division Three and women's D2 broadcasts. Also go to YouTube if you're listening to this and turn on your post notifications. We are live nearly every Friday and Saturday for the next month as we finish out this regular season and get ready for conference play. Bowerson checked his man, a shot from a sharp angle, missed the net. It was Dano trying to get to the back door. Jay Nadu touches this one. Blue line chance, gloved out of the air by Woolery. Nets off its moorings, officials let him play. It's to the slot, off the stick of Woolery and it's now whistled for that. My goodness, Monty took a really Good blue line chance, and stretching the entire arm was Woolery. He gloved it down and couldn't hold it. Now, Devin, we've seen him do that more than a couple times throughout the season, but today especially, he's been playing phenomenally. He's not let anything through thus far. We've got a minute 11 left to go here at the Marty, and he's hoping to keep up that hot streak. I'd also say CMU's defense is clearing the lanes. They've had a tough time in this losing streak of clearing the slot area, getting the back pressure, staying with their men not trailing off the play. And tonight, it's a one nothing tilt to the first 20, but they gotta hold on. Here's a shot from the top of the left circle. It's still loose, and now Woolery's on top of it. That one came from McCaddy, who had himself a goal last night and an assist. Well, it was a good look for the Oakland Grizzlies. It looked like it went off Woolery's right knee pad there, came down, and he realized that it wasn't a glove. He rebounded it and then dropped his entire body to save that one. The defense, though, for the Chippewas have been phenomenal to even let that get through the crease. They've been playing phenomenally thus far. We'll get another left circle chance here. They've been good in the circle. Dots. Gilgren won that one, but it was first touched by McCaddy. Loose in the slot. Another try by Williams. That one went off a of body. They retain possession. Monty at the point. Off the legs of Schultz. 
He'll get to it first. Takes a whack at it into the attacking zone. He's got numbers coming the other way. Tried to center that one, and Monty stuck with him the whole way. Williams button hooks the other side. McMullen, first one to lift it out of the zone. Chopper by Hutton. Backing up was Beamish. With two Grizzly Bears in his face, Schultz missed that one out of the air. CMU will get changes. Gives time for Monty to forward this pass as Oakland's out of sync and they'll have to chip it themselves. 22 seconds left in this first period. We have a lot to talk about. We have not seen a result like this in a long time. CMU with the advantage, 1-0. They are 5-2-2 two two when they score first this season. Jay Nadu at center ice. cross size pass to Messina. He'll look to evade traffic, get it under the stick of Hutton, who will go off for the final change of the period. Check that, they're gonna call the icing, and Brendan Martin doesn't like that. He's arguing Hutton touched it. And he's saying the same thing. Hey, I, he's saying over here, we get a camera on that, thank you, Trevor. He's saying, I touched it with my blade. I don't know what that was about. So that means we've got one more faceoff in CMU zone before the buzzer expires. They got 2.6 seconds left to get something off. If you're CMU, this is a must win faceoff. You can't let the Grizzlies have even a singular shot chance before going to the break. One more draw. Nadu digs in and plays off the wall, and that won't do it. We've talked all about this five game losing streak, the lack of scoring. But in the first three minutes of this game, like Oakland did yesterday, strikes first. one nothing from Owen Campbell and Kyle Robertson to get us started. Parker Morrison will have the intermission report for you to recap it all and maybe get you some out-of-towns as well. You're listening to CMU and Oakland live here on CCHN.
Welcome back here inside Martin Ice Arena, where your Central Michigan Chippewas are taking on the Oakland Grizzlies, currently ranked number 12 as new rankings came out this morning just before we went live. We had those for you in the pregame. We'll finish them with the postgame for you. But let's recap all the action that happened in the first period. The biggest thing for everyone that we're all very shocked by is we have had a clean first period, not a single penalty not only on the Chippewas, but also for the Oakland Grizzlies. Your Central Michigan will lead one to nothing after a great backhanded door from Campbell. He'll pick up the assist from Robertson. And wow, a very, very, very action-packed first period. We're going back to the penalties. It's been a physical game for the Chippewas, not as much the Oakland Grizzlies. But we look at the Central Michigan Chippewas physicality. They've played smart today. We haven't picked up a single penalty, as I've mentioned multiple times, but we're playing smart physically. A lot of the times in the previous games you saw yesterday where we played a little bit dirty, we had a few cross checks, we had a few hooking penalties that weren't the greatest, but now we come in here, we play very physically, but we play smart and we played very, very good coverage defense. Michigan is gonna be at SVSU today for your out of town scoreboards and women basketball today fell to Northern Illinois for the Central Michigan Chippewas. Let's real quick go to the report. Clements is out for this game as well as Kiel, who got a injury, trying to come in for Clements actually uh, during warm-ups. So Will Rapoon will step up for them today, and not only has he stepped up for that position, he's stepped up for the team as a whole. He's been cross-checking left and right. He's been defensively a powerhouse, clearing the zone multiple times. We mentioned that in our keys to the game. Clearing the zone was a big one for the Chippewas, and we've done just that through Will Rapoon today, along with multiple defensive players like Lucas Hutton. That'll be it for your Central Michigan University Chippewas Intermission Report. I'm Parker Morrison from CCHN. We'll be right back for the second period of action.
inside Martin Ice Arena. Devin Sarah Parker Morrison, we happy to have you with us. One nothing is the score in favor of the home team. CMU came out to this game with an emphasis. They had some last minute scratches with the likes of Brandon Clements, Braden Keogh going down with some injuries. But Will Rapoon has stepped into the lineup along with Bowerson and played terrific. He was one of the key contributors in that first period to preventing Oakland from getting through the back iron along with Caleb Wooler who has been terrific, the freshman netminder. And Parker, bringing you into this conversation now, you and I talked about the relentless defensive pressure to get two men to the corner and keep Oakland from getting an easy cycle going. They did it later in the period. OU looked like they had some dangerous opportunities, but it's Oakley ultimately won nothing. Yeah, Devin, and you mentioned how defensive they've played this game. In the beginning, it was heavily offensive for the Chippewas in the first probably seven or eight minutes, and we saw that with a goal uh, coming from Campbell. But we moved to like around 10 minutes left in the first period. It was all Oakland on the offensive standpoint, but Central didn't let up the defensive pressure as we go to the faceoff for the second period. If you're a fan of trends, you'll like what I'm about to say. When CMU is leading after one period, they are 5-0-2 with two overtime losses, that being to Saginaw Valley State and U of M Flint. And when they score the first goal, they're 5-2-2 but they have to finish the job. When they've only scored one goal in a game, they have unsurprisingly been 0-5-1-0. So here we go for second period action from left to right. The Golden Grizzlies in their white and black uniforms, the same ones they wore yesterday with the black helmets. CMU with the color rush tonight, all maroon. He's gonna use an all black everything reference that time, but wouldn't really roll off the tongue right if I said all maroon everything. Bottles now to the corner. His first game back was being scratched last night. Worked it up the wall, moved to Camara. Slides this one backhanded to Monty behind his own net. The pressure by CMU to the net from the point. Slot area chance, nobody could pick it up. Boy, that time that was Gilgren who took a hard check in front of the net. Central has to retreat. Bowerson tags up with Camara. Both teams will get off the ice. Here comes Connor Morgan, who had quietly a very good series so far. The captain, Monty, played it off the glass. Camaro was first to it. Works it up the wall for Jace Johnson. He gave it away up to Monty on the near wall. Camara intercepts that one, sends it on net, and a hard hip check. Oh, that's going to hurt in the morning. Jack Knighting got in the way of the puck. Schultz to dump this one off the wall, trying to give some room. Brendan Schultz with an emphasis. We said his name a lot so far, Parker. He's been all over the ice. Up left wing, here comes Reese Williams. Tries to evade Messina, can't do it. Well, slide this one along. Push forward for Jace Johnson. Here comes the speedy freshman. Up left wing, trying to look for room to center it. He looked to get it to Morgan and it was behind him. Just a lick behind. If Connor Morgan finds that puck, he's got a beautiful slot area shot. Campbell now, pushed to his own zone. Morgan catches up with him. They get it to the half wall. First played by Brian Evans. Helped out by Knighting. Now Camara pushes ahead. Campbell will check his man. He'll finish this one in the corner. Up out of the air on the saucer is Campbell with speed. Here comes Jay Johnson. He's got a chance one on one. Connor Morgan in the slot. He gets hemmed all the way by Kachi. Nice defensive play. Nadu with the wrister. Missed it. First shot of the period, and Nadu had a beautiful point blank chance. And he's gotten roughed up. He went down hard to the ice in this near corner from Knighting. Porzondik over the slot area. Pushes it up to the point with help from Messina. Takes one on net. Settled down by Porzonic. Wrap around try. Missed the left side. Kicked out to the corner. Nadu centers it. Porzonic, another try. I think that got blocked by Kachi. And Hutton can't hold the line, so he has to run back for it. OU will change, and this will force an icing, so they have to stay on. 17-06 in the second period. Parker. Well, now, Devin, you look at how a Offensive the Chippewas have been being so far. Yes, it hasn't resulted in a goal yet, but it's only been three minutes. 
I'm probably looking at an 85-90% offensive zone play for the Chippewas so far. Nady almost had a couple there that was in the slot. He'll go to the faceoff and try to set one up. Porzonic dangles his way in the slot, leaves it there near side. Campbell trying to finish the play for his second and he couldn't get a second roof on it. Behind the net, back ends this one for Nadu. He's got room to work. Along for Rapoon, back end out of the slot. Tough shot, got blocked once then twice. He's helped out with Robertson and if we're passing the eye test on here, faceoffs are probably 65-35 in favor of the home team. That's really good. Haven't been able to say that too many times. Again, trying to break a five game losing skid. Owen Campo got worked over that time. Here comes McCaddy over the line. Up the near wall, he's got help on the left side by Sharp. OU comes out of the bench area. They center it in front, loose. Woolery made the stop. Robertson clears the lane. He'll get it over the blue line. Long saucer, settled down by Ritter, but he's not fast enough to get there. Got Lewski out of the net to throw it in front of a plethora of CBU players. Robertson looks down and says, oh yeah, there's that puck again. Up along his own bench now. In through to the slot. That was a man in front, Duncan McLeod, out of East China, Michigan. Veteran defenseman. Central, every time though, it gets back to their own zone, they're working over the Golden Grizzlies. And right that time, that's Vasilovic taking a hard check and playing through it. You have to be impressed by this effort. OU, number 12 in the country, they were as high as eight this year. They dropped one spot after the most recent rankings last night were released. Grand Valley State is still the number one team. Eight MCHC teams are represented. And that's tied for the most along with the Mid-American Collegiate Hockey Association. This one is offside on OU. Devin, the defensive standpoint has been phenomenal along with the offensive standpoint. CMU is playing picture perfect Chippewa hockey right now. Yes, they haven't gotten that goal that they've been searching for in the first five minutes, but their defense have been amazing. They've been clearing the zone every single opportunity that the Grizzlies have gotten. Yeah, no doubt. And again, why we harp so much on the defensive play is because that hasn't always been the case with this team. We talked heavily about the losses this year that have racked up. They've had eight games this year where they've only scored one goal or fewer. And in the majority of those games, they've lost by more than five goals. In particular, the series against Lawrence Tech, Florida Gulf Coast, and Grand Valley State. But right now, they are playing some of their best hockey in a long time. Sam Kamara gets tripped up on the play, wants a call, and they're going to whistle it. Fanuf was the guilty party, tripping up Kamara up the near side wall. And we've got our first penalty of the night on the Golden Grizzlies. Well, Devin, again, drawing the penalty is something that you're looking for. You can't get any goals right now, so you go to the five on four. And <laughs> when the Chippewa hit the deck there, you saw the entire bench erupt wanting the call. Ref realized what it was. It'll be a tripping. Sending to the right circle for CMU. They'll go to a faceoff, try to get something two minutes on the clock for the penalty, 14-43 left to go. Chippewas were one for three on the power play last night. The only goal was scored by Owen Campbell with five minutes left in the hockey game. They were down four nothing at this point. Much different start for them, much better start. So out of their own zone. Kamara is gonna find this under his wickets. He's gonna quarterback this play, and here they come over the line. One on one against Evan Chippa. He's trying to slash the stick. Giving tough pressure, he has to turn heel, cross ice for Beamish, stays on side, drops the trailer for Gilgren. Gets woed by two players, that's Plant. Now Thomas Monty coming in after him. Sharp angle chance, that's gonna be settled down by Godlewski. Something on the CMU bench caught their eye, they're not happy about. Is that a goal? It looks like it Whoa. might have been a goal, Devin. Whoa, review coming up here because this one was really close. I thought it was behind the back iron. From our upper stanchion point here, it's very tough to see that right point. We're gonna wait on a call here. They're gonna say this is not a goal. They're gonna say Godlewski out of control. Brennan Martin can't believe it on that bench. Brennan Clements scratched tonight. It's in the far corner if you can see on our camera and he's, he's arguing the case, holy cow. Well Devin, I have a little better angle coming from more of a right side than you up on our booth here. And it looks like what happened was it might've hit the skate of Godlewski and then went in one of his players told him to cover it up. It might have been in the net, but they're going to wave that off. If you're at home on YouTube, you can back this one up and you be the judge. Let us know. 
one of those YouTube. Let us know in the comments. You know how they make those on, on YouTube channels? I don't like those videos. But anyway, here's Porzonic over the blue line. Tries to set up a play, and it's sent back by OU. One minute to go in their first power play, the first power penalty of this game. Jay Nadu. Play with Chase Johnson. We got a whistle for something. Are they going to send another OU player? What's going on here? Plant over the line. They're going to whistle this. Huh. They pointed back to center ice with two OU players. That was an odd sequence. I'm not sure why they stopped play. Oh, it looks like they're going to be going to the goal in front of Woolery. Might have been off. Are they going to say it was off? It might have been off bearings there. Wow. Kind of odd they would point to center ice for that, but okay. So now what they're going to do is draw them out in front of the OU bench for the faceoff. Yesterday we had a lot of stoppages of play for the Nets coming off their moorings. And at this ice arena in particular, Martin, they are as short as I've seen anywhere. So it happens a lot. Nathan Bottles out of his own half red line. Forwards it to Morgan who dumps it in. They'll try to implore this technique up the wall. It's kept in by Robertson. Play down low for Morgan who gets back to his feet. Dropped it up for Robertson. Cross size for Bottles. Looks for room to work. Cycles down to Campbell. Back to Bottles on one knee. Tries to backhand it off his legs and he turned it wide. Morgan cycles it back to Robertson. Thinks about it. Back door for Campbell was waiting. It was too strong for him. 22 seconds left in their first power play of the night. Bottles and Campbell reverse position to the slot. Looking for a tip. Morgan couldn't handle that one. They'll get it back now. Loop around. One more time. Campbell to the net. Turned it wide on the right post. And Morgan up to the slot. Robertson with a look off the pads of Godlewski and out. Penalty with one second left whistled as Nadu took down their captain, Monty, in front of the goal crease. And that's going to be actually number 88 for the Oakland Grizzlies. Got his stick, the front of his stick, whacked off completely by a Chippewa there. Oh, man, it's a broken stick. Well, sometimes that could result in a slash, but a little bit of brittle wood there. It is going to be, I believe, a slash and called on Owen Campbell. They put him up for yeah, two on the right. board. <laughs> I was kind of jokingly saying that, but you're right. They did call it slashing. So just as CMU's first power play ends, another one begins. 0 for 1. Chippewas go. Out of the box comes Fanuf. And they'll go to 5 on 4 for the next minute or two minutes. Messina out of the box. Out of his own box. Clears it the length of the ice. Clearing the zone is something that they didn't do last night in their penalty kill and something that they're looking to do tonight. Yeah, they had a really tough time, tired on the ice for many minutes. Here come the Grizzlies. Brendan Dano circles wide, takes one on net. It's redirected, backdoor score! Kicked out to Davis inside the left dots, and he didn't make any mistake about that. It's a power play goal, their third of the weekend, and they've tied this one up at one. Well, there was a minute 31 left in the penalty. That'll be taken off the board. We'll come back to full strength, five on five, with 12 minutes left to go. We're tied here at the Marty, one to one. Tommy Davis for his sixth goal of the year out of Sterling Heights, Michigan, the CompuWare AAA product. Played three years there. Didn't play anywhere last year, to our knowledge. Had a pretty impactful role didn't get on the score sheet yesterday but he was all over the four check setting up plays and just as he scored he's right back to work on the freshman lucas hutton who's trying to evade pressure wraps this one around his own trapezoid first there to it is giza kyle giza set his one in front that one was nearly tipped in on the far side weak side by woolery Give the assist to Reese Williams and Jake McCaddy for that one. Their power play goal, third of the weekend. This OU team has been lethal in that category. One for one tonight. Up the wall. Played out by Giza up his own wall. He'll forward this for McLeod. It's intercepted for a moment. Vasilovic got there to it. Chippewas trying to hem two on one out of the zone. Look at this pressure. And it's McCaddy with a ton of space. Over the blue line. Easy save by Woolery. Kicks this to the corner. Bishop finishes his check. It wraps around the blue line. 
Austin Ritter can't get there first. Fed up by Kachi. Pitching off the play was Isaac Hopp, and he'll go off for a change, calling for it. Robertson a retreat. The last two minutes now, what does that goal do for the momentum? That's the biggest question. CMU in this position has more times than not conceded, not just one goal, but two, then three, then four. So they have to stay on it. Here's a chance from the point. Tough shot is easily gloved by Godlewski with a bouncer, and that will cause a whistle to the right wing. Well, Bowerson had a good look there. Little chippy, unfortunately. But we'll go real quickly to the broadcast of today's game being a copyrighted presentation of the American Collegiate Hockey Association, the CMU Club Hockey Network, and Moore Hall Television. No reproduction, retransmission, and other distribution of the descriptions or accounts of this game may take place without the express written consent of the ACHA, CCHN, and MHTV. Fire put out by Robertson that time as it was sharp nearly with a break, at, break in attempt. Rapoon gets it back the other way. Here comes Campbell with speed. Try to take a shot and he missed that one by 200 feet. Into the net, stops play. Well, it looked like he had a good angle there. Unfortunately, it went way I was, high I was a little personified. and way too I, I, left. I was a little hyperbole with 200 feet there, but you're right. It was a little wide. More than a little, a lot wide. It was Face more off. high than anything. Face off to the left wing circle. Jay Nadu, but you said in the pregame one of your keys one of your impact players Absolutely. to win faceoffs. And I mean, you've seen him do it so far. He's probably, what, 65, 35, if you said earlier, and fit, uh, or in turn of the home team. I'm going to use some blunt humor here. He lost that one. He did. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Unfortunately, he did. Shot by Albo, easily seen by Woolery. Might have and to go to 60, 40 after that one. And among other things that we've talked about, when the Chippewas have scored four or more goals in a game, they've won the majority of the time. But they haven't gotten to that mark. One of their biggest things, when they score two goals, three goals, they have one win apiece. It takes five and six when you have to go to more than one victory on the year. Remember, they're six, 10, two, and one. They open the year pretty well. Here's Porzonic almost with a breakout. That puck bounced one too many times to get in his grasp. Duncan McLeod finishes that check. Before I can finish my point, we've got back and forth action. Way out of the net is Woolery to glove it, and now we'll get a whistle. Now, Devin, I'd actually beg to differ on the last point you just made about finishing that check. It looked like Porzondek finished him, actually, yeah. on the check there. Went to get checked, and Porzondek took his man down, and he was on the offensive standpoint. Yeah, and I'll say this about what I was finishing my record point. It's more about what CMU allows than what they score. Allowing one goal, 3-1 on the year. Allowing two goals, 2-0-1. Two, oh, one. one overtime loss to Saginaw, or rather U of M Flint. But when they allow four, five, six goals without a victory this year. So everything they ride or die is in the hard margins. That being big leads, big losses. So this team's looking for some consistency. Brendan Martin, head coach, made a lot of lineup changes this week. A brand new fourth line, look out. Oakland the other way, a ripper from the left wing. Blocked out of harm's way. They keep it in the zone. Here's Reese Williams. Evades pressure to the wing. Cuts in. Saved by Woolery. And he gloves it down. And CMU's not happy. We're going to go out and in front. Nadu with a shove. Then Campo from behind. Rapoon just trying to get out of there. Is down on one knee. Robertson. That's a dandy. We got a Donnybrook going on. And Robertson was thinking about it. Let's see what these officials assess. They haven't. They haven't laid too many whistles on. They have let them play all night long. I would imagine we're going to get coincidentals because Robertson came in there late to give a shove onto Abbo. Campo came in there last minute as well and took down Dano. Well, Devin, we saw this last night as well where the goalie gets one too many hits on him from the offensive standpoint, and seeing he's not going to like that. I know Derek gave Gilgren a little heat last night for, for pulling that one, but I mean, when your goalie gets hit, and you're playing a hockey game. Your team's gonna defend the goalie. That's just hockey, and that's how it's gonna be played. You're right, I think we are gonna end up with coincidentals here. Probably two on each team. They originally put Robertson and Owen Campbell in the box. On, Grizz on OU's side, it's Jack Abbo. They're gonna take Robertson out of the penalty box, leave Campbell, and we'll assess two minutes right now for Campbell, two minutes for Abbo, and that's what we'll leave it at. Coincidentals, first time tonight we've said that. So it looks like we'll get some open ice to work with. 
9-10 to go in this second period. CMU 1-0, they lead after Owen Campbell's lone goal in the first. He had an assist last night and he scored for his eighth of the year. The junior out of Jackson, Michigan. You remember Chippewa fans a couple of years ago, he was the second leading scorer on this team behind Isaac Gibbs their freshman year. Played under Tyler Catalan, his former coach at Jackson Lumen Christie, developed himself through the core of this team. And when they made that coaching switch, that was when Campbell returned to the lineup. Remember, he was out of the entire first semester last year. Came back, served more of a defensive role on the penalty kill, didn't score as much, and leading into this year, he's been one of the only productive Chippewas on the offensive side. Albeit, they haven't had a lot of offensive production. This one, taken from the left wing. Right pad stopped by Woolery. That was quick. Godlewski wanted an icing for a moment, put his hand down quickly. Monty forwards this one in front of the bench for McCaddy. And retreat back. Williams up the left wing. Forwarded ahead for Davis. Over the line. They'll stay on side. Cutting in left side. Stopped it into the moorings. That was McCaddy. Well, Devin, this is something that CMU struggled with all year is four on fours because they can't get bodies in the way defensively. And that's been a struggle with them the entire season. They're really looking to just stop this four on four the best that they can. Getting bodies in the way is something that they need to do. So they're gonna look to try to get as many in the way as possible and win as many face-offs, especially in their zone. Beamish against McCaddy. And Beamish won it, clean win. Sam Camaro, sophomore out of Orchard Lake St. Mary's carries it up left wing. Bottles in the middle. Off his stick blade. Carry to Godlewski. Thought about sticking it. Left it there for Reese Williams. They'll put two men in. Four on four for the next minute in 17. Beamish looking for room to work behind the net. Takes a check from Monty. Shakes that one off. Forward in the head. One time blast. Robertson into the wickets of Godlewski. What a difficult shot. And he wound up from that one. That was a ripper. It looked like from my angle, Devin, that it hit Godlewski's helmet right under his chin and dropped down. That one <laughs> would have really, really hurt if that helmet doesn't angle down. Yeah, no doubt. And this goaltender in Godlewski, we talked about only playing two games last year, but he's been in a plethora of starts, 4-2-1 and one on the year, .911 save percentage. He's one of four Oakland goalies that really you can plug and play any of them. They've all got playing experience this year and they can be good with them. Pottinger was the net miner last night. He saved 33 on 34 to hold the Chippewas to only one goal. Five to one was the score. Oakland has won the last two contests, notably in the MCHC playoffs, four to three. The last win for the Chippewas, three to one on this ice. Look out, that one squirted on the left post. And Woolery got a piece of it. Over center now. Carried out by Kachi. Finishes check on Camara. Back to retreat for it is Dano. Upright wing. Sheppa with room to shoot. Takes it and it's off the blocker. Woolery again with funky bounce. Squirts out in front. It's in the slot. He's finally whistled it down. One too many bounces were so weird. That one bounced off the left post, kicked out in front, and they had a point blank range to fire at. And Woolery saw it the whole way. This netminder has been good. And, and there's not much more you can say about it. I was gonna say, he was Great. phenomenal that last couple shots. And Robertson's gonna go off as he got a little heated after the play ended as Woolery was knocked on the head from a Oakland knee. And you like to see that. I think Robertson is one of the emotional guys on this team. And that's something that I would, that's a plus. That's a positive having a guy that's emotional. You see the fire, this team wants it right now. Messina, 10 seconds left in the four on four before Campbell and Abel get out. Morgan to winds up at the top of the circle. That one is blocked off Dano. And it's up and out in the CMU bench. Well, Devin and Brennan for the first. Schultz, look at this, sorry Parker. Oh, Giza and Schultz are having a little words in front of the bench. Brennan Schultz has been such a big body for this CMU team. Out of Grand Rapids, Michigan, 6'4", 180. Four goals, two assists, and 19 starts. Played many, many games for the Division II team. 
Well, Devin, it looked like a power play for CMU for that minute 30 until Oakland took a little bit of a possession, that little scuffle, and then it went right back to CMU offense, and we'll go back to it again after the faceoff win. Hutton on the blue line chance, got blocked by Plant on one knee. It's deep to the end, trying to backhand this one in front is Schultz, and it was too strong for Morgan. Out of that right corner. Jace Johnson finishes his check now. That's two times. Connor Morgan under his wickets. Here's Brody Plant. Feeds it up front. Loose change by Messina, cleared out. McLeod. Moved ahead for the streaking Knighting. Wrapped in the trapezoid. Finished the check, up to the point now. Fluttering puck in. In front of the Zamboni glass. Plant, pushed in by Morgan. Officials motion down to move it. Hutton up to the point one more time. That one's off a skate blade of Jace Johnson. Behind the net, Messina takes a whack to clear it. Now OU on their own cycle. They've had the chip was for the last 40 seconds. They get it in front of the net on one knee, clogging the middle. Here's Johnson to possess it. The speedster gets it ahead. Great pass to Campbell. Out of the box. Backhands and nobody in particular. Central with wholesale changes. The young Jace Johnson goes after Brian Evans. Bowerson can't hold the line. Pinching in is Nadu to help him out. And we got a whistle coming up here. And a penalty on Jace Johnson. Nothing, no, I stand corrected. No penalty. Thought there would be one since it was stated in play. It's gonna be offside. Offside, yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Thank you, Parker. Normally I'd say thank you, Reagan, but <laughs> Reagan is feeling under the weather right now. I'm able to join us for this weekend. We hope you're listening in and feeling better, buddy. Parker Morrison, Devin Sarah here from Martin Ice Arena. Derek Steele filled in last night, did a great job. Here's Owen Campbell, right wing chance off the blocker of Godlewski. Loose in the slot area. Puck trickles around momentarily. Williams evades traffic. The speedster comes in, over left wing, trying to go wide with it. Gets chopped off by Camara. Stretch pass, connects to Campbell. Over the line, one on two. Wits for help with Nadu. Backhands this one. Nadu wasn't ready for it, and Williams is gonna play it off the glass and out. Devin, CMU has struggled with connecting tape to tape on the passes, especially in the offensive zones. On this date, in 2017, holding a one goal lead entering the third period at Isabella County Events Arena, CMU exploded for four goals in the final frame, earning the series split with Oakland after a score of eight to four. Dalton Sutherland tallied hat tricks with James Gleason clicking three helpers to the win. That was on October 28th, 2017. You said on this date? Yes. I guess the sheet is completely wrong. Devin. I guess it's still October. Wow. <laughs> yeah, we have not updated that apparently. Yeah, we, uh, well, you know, it's still a good fact. I like the name. If you didn't say the date, it would have been great. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't just point out your own miscue there. It's okay. You did a great job. We're all good. Dalton all Sutherland, good. the name you just mentioned. Yeah. One of the all-time leading goal scorers for this Chippewa team. His name needs to be hanging in the rafters in Martin Ice Arena, along with his former teammate, Brenton Martin, on that bench. What a job this group has done. Assistant coach is Tyler Koff, Charlie Hayes. On the other side of things, the Golden Grizzlies are head coached by Matt Sterling in his sixth season. Tyler Lampman, Sam Palmiter, former player, along with Nick Rogers, former goalie, make up this staff. Goalie coach is Clayton Brown. They've done a great job getting this OU team back to the top ranks of the MCHC. They were a powerhouse for a long time in the old regional format of men's division three. And for a while there, they struggled out of the COVID year. Block shot off Robertson's hip. This one will be played off the wall and out by Nathan Bottles. Tries to get inside positioning, gets hooked down, and there's gonna be a call coming up here on the Grizzlies. Ryan Kachi took down Bottles and a face full of snow, and we got a power play with 4.04 left in the second. Well, Devin, they weren't able to capitalize on the first power play. They are looking to do so on this one, but breaking down that play a little bit, Bottles went around his man, sticked it against the wall, tried to go right, scoop around. Wasn't able to do it because he got hooked, but if he did get to there, it would have been a fast break one-on-one -on -one with him and the goalie of Godlewski. 
So we got Simi's second power play of the night. They're 0 for 1 previously. Only other penalty was at the 522 mark of this first, of this second. Have been letting them play. Officials have, not something we've been saying all year. And the faceoff draws won by the chips. Camara cross to Johnson at the left point. This one off a body, kicked out from the end board glass. It's still loose behind the net. Campo trying to use inside positioning on Giza. Wins that battle over. Morgan will rim it around for Johnson at the point. Playing that hybrid defensive position. Camara drops it backwards. Morgan, one more time over to Johnson. Looks for room to share, takes it, and Godlewski in the wickets. And this freshman Johnson, I talked to him yesterday, he has been snake bit. He's only played a couple of games, five, for his career. He opened in the Florida Gulf Coast Series, had an assist to his name. He has a first point in his career, but he does not have that first goal. And for a guy that scored 40 plus goals in high school, led the way in MHSAA hockey, he told me, once I get that first, I feel like it's going to start opening up. But oh, it, the and, first and it goal, will. That it first will. goal is hard. It's the hard, the, the first one is always the hardest to get. And he struggled to find it, but make no mistake about it, this kid's talented. We hope he's gonna be here for a while. Hopefully, yes. Along with the likes of Lucas Hutton, Sam Camaro, Braden Kiel, the list goes on with guys that can take this program back to a place they want. They still have a lot to play for this year. Four weekends remaining in the year. Here's Jace Johnson. Wraps it around the boards. One minute to go in their power play. Stops on a dime. He'll look to carry it to the right point. Across to Camara. Camara thinks about it. Johnson calls for it. Too strong for him. He settles it down. Thinks about driving in. He'll look. Shoots. And that one's off the skate blade. Getting in front of that was Ruiz. Camara thinks about it. Takes it. Got Lewski with the right pad. Kicks to the corner. They retain possession. Morgan thinks about it. That one's off the skate of Giza. Now from Johnson, he winds up and he missed the right corner. Johnson's at three on this drive alone and he can, you can tell he wants that goal. He but wants to get his first ACHA goal and he's, he's itching for it, you can he tell. He wants it bad, he's frustrated as can be going off to the bench. He got roughed up somehow over there as he skates off gingerly. So Messina out of his own end. We'll drop the trailer for poor Zondik. 10 seconds to go in their second power play of the night. Over the red line, chipped ahead. First to it is McLeod. Intercepted, penalty, two seconds left. Poor Zondik backhands this one. In the left crease area, Monty to take that one away. Out of the box comes Kachi. 0 for two tonight is CMU. In the slot area, that one got to a dangerous spot. Poor Zonic trying to backhand it for Nadu. This top group has seen their looks, but the one thing they struggle to do is connect tape to tape and get a clean shot off. Here come the Golden Grizzlies. Left pad saved by Woolery. Sharp angle try doesn't get through. Messina blocked it off. Intercepted, here's Chase Johnson. They've got a break two on one the other way. Johnson into the net, takes it, and getting back on the play was Monty to kick it off his heel into the netting. Oh my, Johnson thought he was gonna have the opportunity of a lifetime for his first. And Thomas Monty, a veteran captain, came back on the back pressure. And it looked really good for Johnson, swinging down the left-hand side. He had more momentum than I've seen out of him in a while. Had a great look and just gets tripped up there. Just a wee bit outside. Not really, but you know what I'm saying. Well, was you gotta to give there. credit to the goalkeeper. I mean, you, as gotta, well. you gotta give credit to Monty, though. Thomas very Monty, true, very a true. senior out of Harrison Township. He's one of the long standing Golden Grizzlies on this team. They made it to Nationals for the first time in years last year. And they've got a veteran defensive core. The likes of Monty, along with players like Peck, I think of Kachi, Griffin Geertz, the list goes on. These guys have been here for a while and they want more than just their 12th ranking. This team believes Matt Sterling's group that they can be a national contender. They got a they got a sniff of it last year. And they were close, but ultimately bounced out in Michigan's pool. Here's a slot area chance. Johnson. Godlewski made the right pad save on him. He backhanded that from the slot area. You think Johnson wants this one bad? Here's Camara falling to the ice. Taken back by Peck. Rather Furtick. Moved along for Bowerson. Settled down by Schultz to stay on side. No, he didn't. 
Porzondik was too far, that would have been a great scoring ability. 30 seconds left in the second period. I will have the second intermission report for you. We'll break down this one a little bit closer and get you some live out of town from the ACHA and more. Well, Devin, we look back at that Johnson attempt. He had a great backhanding look, but you got to give credit to the netminder, Caleb Godlewski. If you're Johnson and you're looking to score for your first collegiate point, it's going to be very difficult against a veteran defense and the likes of Godlewski. OU with 20 seconds left to go in this period. Looks to get an offensive attack going. They can't do it. It's Beamish there first to it. Button hooking out of his own end is Abo. Hot pursuit is Gilgren. Stretch pass missed. This will be an icing. It'll put 8.1 seconds on the clock in OU's end. Well, Devin, if we do end up going to this third period tied 1-1, one one, CMU's got to be on the lookout because that's where OU yesterday took two the ice. They demolished CMU in almost every single statistic you can think of. Yeah. And that's going to be a huge, huge struggle. Is we've known OU as a third period team and they continue to show that. So we've really, really got to hammer down on the defense in the third period if this ends up being 1-1 going into the break. Five seconds left on the clock. Campbell will push his man. Nadia tries to take a slapper. It gets to Porzonic with a backhand try and he put it wide off the right post. That's gonna do it for 40 minutes. This central group is hungry. Jace Johnson with a number of great chances, a number of good looks by the top line. It remains only one nothing. Both teams in a stalemate in that second period. We're gonna recap this one for you here. We've got a good one, folks. MCHC rivals doing it out. CMU looking for their first win in five. We'll take a break and bring you back for a second intermission report here on CCHA.
We're back with you for the second intermission report presented by SeamitchIceHockey.com. 1-1 after 2 is the score, and OU got on the board from their man Tommy Davis, scoring on the power play. He was assisted by Matt Phaneuf, as well as Jake McCaddy, able to get in, or Reese Williams, excuse me, in the back iron at around the midpoint of the second period. Shots right now are 23-22 to in favor of the away team, OU, but they were dead even pretty much in that period. 12-11, to CMU, a narrow gap. This has been one of the best defensive games from CMU we've seen in a long time. They have been back pressuring on the power play. Chance that OU had their one for one on the night. Afterwards, they came with an emphasis and had a number of good scoring chances from Jace Johnson looking for his first goal as a Chippewa. In his first five starts, he has been snake bit as they come, but a lot of good stuff in the late in that second half. The penalties ramped up in that second period. We didn't have a single interfraction. Interfraction, that's not a word. <laughs> we didn't have a single infraction in the first period. Not something we've been able to say all year, but then the second period, it started to ramp up. All you took the first penalty from Fanuff for a tripping call. Then it was CMU two minutes later, they would go for one by Owen Campbell for a slash. Oh, you would cash in on that one, scoring from Tommy Davis. Then it was coincidental as we had a scrum in front of the net with Campbell and Jack Abo involved. And then finally, most recently, it was CMU's, or rather, OU's uh, penalty for an interference uh, that caused them to go to the box for two minutes. So. You look at a silver lining, it's really back and forth. Both these teams kind of even out completely, and it's a game. And for Central, who's on a five-game losing streak, they're trying to avoid six straight. If they lose six straight tonight, that'd be the first time since the 2014 season, pretty much their third year in existence when they lost that many in a row. Against a top-ranking opponent like this in Oakland, who is trying to hold on themselves for a national title spot. 12th in the nation, they are ranked. And I want to highlight some of the rankings for you if I get them on my... Uh, tablet device here uh, that are around the country. We'll get you some out-of-town scoreboards as well here in a moment. Grand Valley State came in for the fifth straight week as the number one team in the nation. The Lakers have still not lost a game in regulation this year. They tied Calvin 2-2 last night, the number uh, 11 team in the country currently. They took that spot from Oakland who drops 1-12. to But tonight, Calvin is going to be taking place at 7.30 Eastern time in Eagle Life Center on home ice They've already beat Hope College earlier this year, 4-3. to three. If they can beat Grand Valley State, that would all but lock them in to the national tournament here in just a couple of weeks. Meanwhile, Florida Gulf Coast slots into the number two spot. They took care of business against Notre Dame yesterday. They're getting a rematch today at 6 p.m., which is going on right now. Be sure to look at ACHAHockey.org for updates, as well as Florida Gulf Coast's Instagram page. Meanwhile, Lawrence Tech at the number three spot. This team has been in the mix all year long. They have four fresh lines they can roll out anytime and score at will. Followed up by Missouri. How about this team? Only three regulation losses in the last two years, those including the national tournament, and they have been formidable to say the least. Missouri, one of the matcha teams, the top ranked matcha team, Mid American Conference. Hope College at five, Air Force at six. Seven is Michigan State. How about the Spartans? Dartmouth at eight, Colby College at nine. I don't think anybody expected a team like that to be in the top 10 followed up by Arkansas. 11 sees Calvin University, these Golden Grizzlies at 12. 13 is University of Michigan, the reigning national champions. Colorado School of Mines at 14. 15, Purdue University and Saginaw Valley State coming off that overtime loss against OU last week on the bubble spot. And what's important about top 16, the teams that are in the top 16 get in, but the conference winners get an auto bid if they're in the top 25. So you do not want to be one of those last two teams in the top 16, or you have a chance of going home. It's followed up by Missouri State at 17, CMCC at 18, Dortmouth at 19, 20th Notre Dame at uh, Creighton following them up, Sacred Heart at 22, Kansas 23, Miami, Ohio at 24, and UMass, the reigning Division II national champions, their D3 team is at number 25. Our only out-of-town scoreboard to update you on is actually the NFL. The Houston Texans and Baltimore Ravens are tied at 10 at halftime. How about the Texans, huh? C.J. Stroud is pretty damn good. Uh, the Baltimore Ravens looked unstoppable. They resoundly beat the 49ers a couple of weeks ago. But getting in the playoffs, you can be rusted going in, into that divisional round. So all I got to say is go Lions. <laughs> uh, as far as we know about CMU Women's basketball, what happened there, Michael? 70-57, to 57, CMU loses to the Huskies. Capriya Brown, 20 points. 
That's remarkable. That's awesome. That's crazy. So Capriya Brown, heck of an outing for her. But that women's team has been struggling all year long. They fall to 2-14 on the year. As for the rest of our updates, we have a third period coming up here in about six minutes. Central Michigan looking to avoid their first losing streak in over eight years. And they have to hold on for 20 minutes and get one in the back garden if they want to do that. We're knotted up at one here after 40 minutes. We'll be back after the second intermission for Puck Drop. Don't go anywhere.
Bring us back with a the theme. Hey. One one after two as we welcome you back inside Martin Ice Arena, CMU. Looking to hold off the number 12 team in the country. Devin Sarah Parker Morrison joins me. Parker, I talked about in the break their defensive ability. They allowed a power play goal to Tommy Davis halfway through that second. Unfortunately, we've been big on trends tonight. They've lost five straight. They're looking to avoid six straight. They have not won a game this year, allowing a power play goal. 0-7, one and one when that happens. Well, Devin, you can't really discredit the defense entirely, though, because they've been playing amazing, and you've got to give credit to a lot of the newer guys on the team. Lucas Hutton and, and Rapoon have both played tremendously defensively, and obviously, Woolery, you cannot give no credit to the man that guards the net. We'll head out to the faceoff. These two MCHC rivals have gone back and forth the last couple of years, and we get to it for the last 20 minutes of play. 1-1 one, one after two. Here they come out of the CMU zone. OU trying to establish that attack in the first couple of seconds. Up the near wall, Isaac Hopp finishes his check. He wenches it along there where it's cut off by Camara. At the point, Monty gets pushed ahead for the stale play. This one's whacked at one too many times by Robertson. Central tries to establish possession, making life difficult as OU. Hop to gain the red line and dump this one in. First change for CMU in this period. Button hooking is Reese Williams, the talented freshman of Orchard Lake. Drop pass to Thomas Monte, who evaded a near three on one chance for Jace Johnson to shoot for his first goal. Put out a big fire. Dano has to evade traffic the other way. It'll be caught up to by Morgan. This one's intercepted by Hutton in front. And Woolery never found that one. It was Jace Johnson getting back. Played out of the air. Up the other side for Phaneuf. Behind the net, here's McCaddy. Tried to get back to McMullen, and he missed him. Evades pressure by Morgan this time. He'll cut it off behind the net, near side. Poked away by Woolery. Pushed up, but not out. Spencer Messina and the freshman Hutton try to tag up along the wall, and they will. Johnson will go in alone to give his team time to change. He'll cut inside, goes hard to the net. Godlowski score! There it is! Chase Johnson, his first goal in his ACHA career! Devin, he looks at the left side, sees that he can beat not one, not two, but three Grizzlies. Whips it down the left side with the most speed we've seen out of him. And he's able, well his line is getting changed to single-handedly bring the Chippewas two to one. 18-11 here to go, he scored in just the first two minutes to get his first ACHA career point, Devin. And we couldn't have asked for it at any better time as we're taking on the number 12 team in the nation and he'll put us up for it. Johnson of Brownstown, Michigan, the brother of Julian Johnson gets on the board but he gets paid the price. He's sitting in the box right now for a penalty. They're giving this goal to CMU. There's a conversation. You love to see that. This kid felt like he was snake bit for the first five games of his career. And he finally cuts in alone and puts it through the wickets of Godlewski, who looked like he was gonna make that easy save. One on four. How about it for the kid? And he gives them back the lead. 18, 17 to go in this hockey game. Jace Johnson, his first goal in his collegiate career. And Reese Williams, out of his own red line, tries to get back to the attack. It's taken by Tommy Davis. Onto the net, right pad save. Up the wall, Connor Morgan. Long saucer out of the zone. That'll be touched by Williams. No icing to come of it. Williams evades pressure, finishing to check his Schultz. Drop the trailer from McCaddy, who sails it ahead. Over the line, they stay onside by Davis. They'll wrap it around the boards. Tommy Davis, the only goal scorer for the Golden Grizzlies tonight. Along the far wall, played by Deneau. This shot taken from the slot once, twice, three times. It's loose at point blank. CMU can't find it. Woolery does. 
and it's squirted out to the near side. Another try by Davis out of the air. It's loose in the blue paint. Right side chance, and it's skirted free. Central is clogging the lane. Tired bodies on the ice. One more try, up the near side, and it's lifted but not in. Morgan, first to it off the wall. It's touched up, played out by Dano, and they'll go off for wholesale changes. Boy, they needed that in this power play for OU. Kevin, you can't give any more credit to the defense there. Here's a shot from the slot area taken by Davis and it never got through. Porzondek takes him down to the ice and they're gonna get Porzondek for that one. Delayed penalty, 37 seconds left in that power play and OU is gonna get a five on three. Now, Backbreaker. Devin, Devin, this is something you can't give up if you're a Chippewa fan. Five on three is not gonna play out well for the Chippewas. You've got to clog the lane with as many bodies as possible and have one out top to get the fast break. You just need to clear the zone for 37 seconds to put it back to a five on four in favor of Oakland. You can't let up a goal here. With Julian, or excuse me, with Johnson putting us ahead two to one, and now we're on a five on three. It's just, it, it, you can't let it up as Chippewa. Right circle chance, dig in. At the point, this one's carried by Kachi. Dropped it off to Ruiz, they're gonna think about it. Up to Fanuf. Ruiz at the angle, tried to center it in front and Campbell got in the passing lane. Clears it down the ice, 22 seconds of five on three before Jace Johnson is allowed to come out of the box. Well that Fanuf. is exactly what you needed there, Devin, is clearing the zone at least once and they gotta do it again With here. With speed up right wing, drops it off, thought about the shot and roofed it high. At the point, Ruiz, back to get it in front for Chippewa, he lifted that one high too. They keep it at the point by Kachi. Out of the box, five on four we go. Ruiz from a tough angle, and down to his pass was Woolery, never got to him. Kept in once again by Kachi. He'll wait with his D partner, Chippa. Rather, that's Brody Plant. Back to Chippa, rather, Kachi fan on the one-timer. There's Chippa to play it up the glass. At the wing, Fanuf. One more try, there's Kachi on the net, slow. One-timer, got to Wooler and he made the easy stick save. 55 to go in the minor penalty to Porzondek for a hit from behind. And the stick taken out of the hands of an OU player, that's Dominic Ruiz. So he'll go off to the bench. Two to one is the score, as Jace Johnson scores his first for the Maroon and Gold. Trying to hold this one to that advantage. Over the line, staying on side is Dano. Skates wide with it, defended by Messina. He'll look for the apple in front, and it skirts on Woolery, who's down on his knees, and he made that stop with 23 to go in the penalty. It was a very clutch save by Woolery with only 23 seconds left to go in the minor, with CMU up two to one. Devin, I said what needed to happen on a defensive standpoint to clear the zone and keep this at a two to one and they did that to perfection. Cleared the zone twice, was able to get it to a four on five as CMU came out, stole it away, cleared the zone yet again. We got 23 seconds left here to go and they want to do just that. OU is three for five on power plays this week. That's a 60% clip. And with 20 seconds left, this penalty kill trying to dig in. It's loose in the paint. Back door is open and Morgan got there to it to whack it wide. The help defense, Devin, we've talked about it all night. We see it here again. And that forces Reese Williams to do some pretzel turns. He'll carry it over that red line in. Onside, one second left out of the box comes Porzondik. One for two on the night is OU. Up the wall, they still retain possession. Looking to go in front, back door! And the one got blocked by Jace Johnson. I don't think that ever got to the back door, actually. It went to the Blocks slot area. That was where they yeah. were trying to go, but. This one is ultimately gloved down for the icing. So they kill off that penalty. That's an important kill. What does that do for CMU's momentum? Well, when you get back to full strength, it's always going to give you more momentum. And they're not only riding two killed penalties, but they're also riding a first collegiate goal for Johnson. And Devin, you can't get much more momentum than this. They're beating the number 12 team in the nation right now, two to one, off a very, very clutch goal from Johnson. Johnson led the MHSAA in goals last season. The entire state of Michigan. 40 almost. He's been so talented, he's looking up at me right now. 
I gave him crap on the bus yesterday for not scoring on a goal, cutting inside. He had two good looks. I told him today, you do the same thing you did yesterday, and you're going to put it in. And he did. Talented freshman out of Riverview. Happy to see it. But they've got to hold on for 14-29 to take down this team. Left circle draw taken by Morgan, and he won it. Boy, Connor Morgan has been so good in the faceoff dots all weekend. Johnson couldn't handle that touch up at the red line. It's rimmed around the boards. Up the right point for Evans. Nobody in particular. Camara now will sail it ahead for Johnson and Hop. They'll go in to chase after it, and that's a nice thing because they never got possession. Evan, it's been stoppage after stoppage, but CMU still claims the momentum factor in this game thus far. Two kill penalties in a row. One coming off a five on three, which was very clutch from Woolery to stop multiple attempts from the Grizzlies. We go to another face off. 14-10 left to go here at the Marty. Up to the point for Monty. Hit his own player on the skate blade. That was McMullen. Hop. In a turnstile. Over there with Evans. Camara tries to whack it away. Four Chippewas to the strong side. Hop gets it up the wall to get out of the zone. They'll flip it back. Hop, good play off his legs. Up there with Jace Johnson. They stay on side. Forwards it for Jace. He's going to cut inside to the net. Tries to wrap it around now, and he missed that one off the right post. Gets it back now in the point. Good job pinching that one off Camara. Grim it to the end board. That's Gilgren there, first to it. Evading the check was Davis. Kept in at the line by Bowerson. He'll wrap it off the glass. Here's Hop in that Zamboni corner with Porzondic. Look out, got a guy up high. That was McMullen, but the referees didn't see it. Up the half wall. Good play once again by Kamara at the line. Thinks about it, shoots, and Godlewski sees it the whole way to settle things down. 13-0-3 to go in this third period. CMU still leads. Well, Devin, there were multiple shot attempts there coming from the Chippewas. Most notably, another one from Johnson. Tried to get that, the wrap around. It almost looked like he was gonna go for a Michigan for a second. I was a little concerned, went for the wrap around, got blocked off the pad, save. Nadu hops back into the faceoff. We'll see what he can do here. Michigan move is a bold thing. It's really trendy right now, isn't it? Yeah. We've seen a lot more of them in the college hockey ranks. I was about to say collegiate hockey, yeah, it's been getting very popular. Uh, unfortunately, 95% of the time, Devin, it, it doesn't work. Adrian Bulldogs Division One team had one the other day against Michigan Dearborn. I believe they won something like 8-1 in that game. So if you're gonna <laughs> do it, you gotta be comfortable enough. I don't think Brendan Martin, that head coach, wants to see that with a one goal lead at 12.34 to go. Against the number 12 team in the nation, mind you. OU trying to do something about that. Fanuf dangles his way to a clean area. They get it. Backdoor. Ruiz stopped by Woolery. Splashed out to the half wall. Johnson evades traffic. Cutting off the angle inside. It somehow gets to the blue paint. Porzonix down. And Owen Campbell says, get that out of here. He'll leave the trailer for the speedy Johnson. He's going to go inside one more time. Rather, he pushed to the end boards. Evades the hit. Look at that move on Peck. He's feeling confident. Morgan now into that corner. It's fluttered onto the PA stand. Finishing the play is Rapoon on Chippa. Chippa gave him one too many whacks to the skate. Morgan touches up at the red line. Schultz to play it in after Kachi. Kachi to Sharp. The Cena from the point. Godlewski found it with the stick. Connor Morgan. Find some room to work. Finishes out Giza, hunting up the wall. He's gonna chase this one back and it's gonna result in an icing on OU. So they can't change. Devin, we've seen throughout the night so far is CMU playing more physically. However, they've been playing physically with a good mentality. They've had a lot of good checks that have been progressive enough to get them into the point where they want. Yes, we've had a few that resulted in a penalty, a two on us. However, a lot of them have been very strategic in getting them to go on a five on four for a couple seconds to get a shot off. Connor Beamish, after that face-off draw, loses handle of it. Jack Knighting with speed for Chippa. Long shot in, seen by the blocker of Woolery. Messina turns heel. Heads for a better way where it's seed. Here's Gilgren, winds up with the shot. That went off the skate blade of Giza in front. 
And look out, the other way is Knighting. Couldn't handle that pass at the wall. He's tired, going off for a change. 11-11 to go. Make a wish, Chippewa fans. They gotta hold on for the next half a period. In front to the slot, shot, skate blocked off of Beamish. He paid the price, but what an effort for him. And Beamish hobbling, trying to get off the ice. He does. Back in come the Grizzlies. Shot from the slot is blocked off the back of Monty. Porzonic in the chase after Williams. He'll evade that pressure. He'll take it himself. Stays on side up the left wing. Poke checked by Camara. Backhand to the slot. Wide open. Net to shoot at. Woolery made the stop. And it's cleared the lane by Camara. That was Dano with the opportunity in 10 28. Whistle stops play. Devin, I talked about it earlier is the help defense that CMU's been able to coordinate on the defensive zone to stop the puck and clear it every single time thus far. CMU's played phenomenally with putting bodies in the way, getting to the slot, and stopping Oakland in every single chance they've had in the third. Michael Sana for OU, number 13, is a scratch tonight. He's only played four games this year. Look out, before I finish that point, Jay Newt is onside with Owen Campbell. Takes the shot in, but Monty evaded off the stick play. Sauna told me, hey, maybe our team would be player playing better if I was in the lineup, jokingly. He's a 1998 born player. That would put him at, what is that, 25 years old? Veteran. Devin, you're asking me to do math on a weekend. I don't know how, uh, <laughs> I don't know how well it's gonna go for me. Math is hard. It's hard. It's hard doing numbers in your head. Look out. Campbell's got his helmet off. And down on the far side is Schultz. This has been a beaten and battered Central team. They have taken their fair share of humbling licks. Lost four straight to Florida Gulf Coast. And GV lost last night 5-1. to one. They came out with an emphasis today. Brendan Martin said to us yesterday that he made a lot of changes. And he wants to see his guys earn it. They have enough scratches in the lineup to... Plug and play guys, some out, out of this lineup due to personal concerns. They've lost guys for the season, but tonight they put in a valiant effort. Still got to hold on for 942. There's a chance for the top of the right circle by Davis. Looking for his second. Push to the end boards by Rapoon. Gets help from Giza. Morgan came in to finish the check. Rapoon tried to forward this for Schultz who blew a tire. Robertson in hot pursuit by Davis. Turns a whack for it. Jace Johnson pressures Giza. Rather McLeod. Over the line, carried forward by McCaddy and they're offside. And he takes a little extra shot from the small forward. And look out, McCaddy's not happy. We're gonna get a Donnybrook in that far corner. He's trying to take the head off of a CMU player. That's Robertson. And they're into it big time. Oh my, I didn't think that was gonna be all that. McCaddy came over the line offside and he got taken down by Robertson in that far corner and he wasn't happy. They've been going at it all night long. Let's see what they do for McCaddy. He's definitely gonna go off here. Chirping to the CMU bench still. Well, Devin, what happened there was he crossed the blue line, clearly offside. CMU heard the whistle and was already in the middle of an open ice cross check. On the caddy, he didn't like that. After the whistle brew, he thought they had more than enough time to stop the cross check. From our angle, it did look like he was already in the middle of trying to finish that check. So it looks like McCaddy's gonna go off here along with number 11 for the Chippewas, Kyle Robertson. Yep, so they're gonna send them both and call it a coincidental. I would say, partisan-wise, that McCaddy instigated it, but I can understand why they put both in the box. So you're gonna have a four on four open ice look for the next 9-14. This CMU staff, it's been a low scoring game. Two to one in this one. Both sides have been back and forth. It's been action packed, they're even in the shots. OU has the power play goal, which is the difference for them, but they have Jace Johnson and Owen Campo on the board. Uh, this is a heck of an effort. What do you make of it, Parker? Well, Devin, it's been mostly a defensive battle for CMU. They've had their fair share of offensive looks, but defensively, I don't think you can get much better. They put bodies in the way, stopped two very important penalty kills. They've been on a streak defensively. Under the wickets of Camara, turned the puck over, McMullen pulled up, and Woolery denied it. Out of their own crease, Porzondek has to turn heel, drop the trailer off to Camara, 
who waits patiently for it. Little pass forward to himself. Evades Chippa, tries to get him turning, spinning, he does. Campbell loses handle of the puck. Chippa to dump it in. Off the right pad. Mont Thomas Monty in. The center it. Jay Nady took that passing lane away. Hubble pass. Nice move to Campbell. He's going to get this one up back to his own zone. Playing a little bit of keep away here on the Chippewas. Camara now tries to forward it forward. Kevin, it looks like they're trying to just waste the time here off the clock. They haven't been very successful on four on fours. No doubt. You can't blame them with the lead trying to play. Somewhat safekeeping, help out their netminer, but Fanuf got something to do with that. Cross ice up to the point now. They'll think about it. Davis winds up, and that one was a confident save by Woolery. He saw that the whole way. Now, Woolery had no doubt in his mind that that was going right into his left hand glove. Scooped that one up with a little bit of flair. Now, when I think about this other netminder and Caleb Godlewski, two Caleb's going at it, by the way. I haven't said that yet. Um, he hasn't seen too much as of late. Besides that Jace Johnson goal, he's seen one shot on his left blocker. And it was kind of an easy one. Messina now does the move, cuts inside to the backhand, and Godlewski stuck with him. We called his number and he paid it. Messina drops it there for Beamish. Tries to get it inside and Davis took away that lane. The assistant captain for the Chippewas. Blows a tire. Abba worked him over. He'll get it forward for Fanuf. Looks to stay onside and doesn't. Gilgren is gonna button hook this. Button boy, I said button boy, birthday boy. Lifts into the air for the icing. Seven, if we looked at the stats for shots on goal for Oakland, shots on goal for CMU, saves for CMU and saves for Oakland, I would think Oakland would be ahead by at least five or six goals. But we're at a two to one standpoint with CMU leading. They've had two very, very important goals. One coming from um, Johnson, his first ACHA, and then another one in the very, very beginning of this game. And it's been a defensive battle for the Chippewas. Here's the other way. Tip in front intended for their man, Luke Peck. And it went off his skate. Here's a shot from the point taken by Kachi, and it went wide. Up the far half wall. Look at a center one in front, and look at Lucas Hutton. Persistent with the puck coming in there, off his own bench. He's going to go off for a good clean change. Connor Beamish gets on side, winds up a shot. That one went through the wicket to Kachi. Hawk catches up to it. Beamish there to trail support. He's hemmed in by McLeod. Bodies flying everywhere. That's McCaddy regaining possession. Turns over his skates, forwards a long saucer in. Touched by Abo to stay on side. Taken over by the Chippewas, Kyle Bowerson. Want to note some, we haven't seen Nathan Bottles for a while in this game. Bowerson, I will have an update for you there in case of an injury, but have not seen Nathan Bottles back on the ice for a while. Kyle Bowerson, up the far half wall, one time chance, and Godlewski saw it with that right pad save. OU the other way with numbers, three on two develops, back pressure by Porzonik, still loose in the slot, however. They've got to clear it out, they can't do it. Here's Dano. Gets it across the way. Looking to move with it is Abo. Behind the net. Centering feed and it missed the shot that time. Was Giza. Nadu with the poke check inside. Giza can't hold the line and it's out. 5.48 to go in this game. A win for Chippewas would end their five game losing streak. A loss for Oakland would put their national title chances not in jeopardy, but it would hurt. Here's a short side chance seen by the shoulder of Woolery. Giza at the line, tries to work one in. Robertson rims it around the boards, catches the shoulder that time of Will Rapoon. And Thomas Monty slows things down methodically, sharp over the line. Gets hurried by Schultz and Johnson. Back for Dano. One touched across the way. First two, it is sharp. And look at that pressure, CMU in the neutral zone, not allowing OU to get set up. Will Rapoon lifts one into the body of Peck, and he'll retreat now. 4.57 to go in this game. The Grizzlies, can they nod this one up? They've played the most overtime games of any team in the MCHC this year, seven. They're three, two, and two in that record. Wins over Hope, Hope College, SVSU, They've lost to Florida Gulf Coast. 
Hope College, and they've tied with Lawrence Tech and SVSU. Clap bomb by Robertson, the rim it around the boards. They keep it on side. Here's Peck at the wall. Central's clogging up the middle. Rapoon is first there to defend against McMullen. Back to Peck. Tries to find McMullen in. Woolery wanted to glove it down, couldn't reach it. This left side has been busy. That's Robertson over there. Defending McMullen. Give it back one more time to Peck. Will he shoot it on? He will. It's loose in the slot area and sent the way. Chippewa down on the ice. That's Connor Morgan. He's still down on the ice. Stick off. He'll try and get up now gingerly, but he's hurt bad. He can't move very much. They now rim it around the board. It's going to be an icing against CMU, which doesn't let them change. Hopefully Morgan's all right. He took that stick, rather, that puck right in his chest. He looks to be okay now. Looks like he's just a little roughed up after that one. I mean, it was a very, very hard shot that went straight into him. See I think we're gonna get a timeout. Out. Yeah. yeah, we're gonna get a timeout here and CMU's looking to just waste time on the clock, try to clear the zone, maybe even get a few more shots off. But right now, as they lead two to one, Devin, what are you looking for here, man? Offensively and defensively. Well, let's start on the forecheck. They haven't had a real offensive pressure besides that one shot from Messina in the last five and a half minutes. It's been all youth in the neutral zone, controlling the pace of things, but they can't get a clean entry to the zone more times than not. That last time around, they worked it along the left side, and I think the biggest thing is they just keep it to the outside. A central team has struggled, we talked in the pregame, to clear the puck out of the lane, the slot area, They've really allowed a lot of rebound chances, they're net minders, and it's resulted in the scores it has. Nine to two losses, six one, big deficits. But I think about today where they put an emphasis on getting two men to one person, clogging up those corners and making it tough defensively for OU. To get their four check going, they're playing keep away right now. Make no mistake about it. They're not necessarily looking to score right off this hop, off this face off. They're waiting to get a defensive look and look for Godlewski to go out with 340 feet to go. When do they think about pulling him? Well, what Devin, do you think, Parker? Well, Devin, with how defensively CMU has been, it only takes one good clear to mess up that goalie standoff, and they come become three to one, exactly like we just witnessed from Nady. One good clear, and it's wraps for him. Think about why he made that stop. Dano tries to pull up on the shot, and he gets his stick in the way. That's effort, and another poke check, Jay Nadu. Making life tough for the Golden Grizzlies. 3.25 now is the clock time. Two to one, CMU leads of Owen Campbell, seventh of the year, and Jace Johnson's first as a Chippewa. OU's onside, Dano moves it ahead from a sharp angle and it's over the shoulder of Woolery. Up the near half wall, they'll get it inside for Kachi. Winds up and Woolery, confident as ever with the glove. That is some more flair on that glove save. When he makes those, and they're not very, very often, but when he makes those glove saves, he makes sure that you know that he made the glove save. Flares it up a little bit, as he always does. Caleb Woolery of Grand Rapids, Michigan and Forest Hills Northeastern. Averaged 2.09 goals against average, 918 in high school. He was pretty good, and he's been great this year. He's had a tough last couple of games, and this is the kind of night that he needs to get that confidence back. Chippewas out of the neutral zone. Messina carries it up the far wall. It's hemmed in by Connor Morgan to chase after. Their captain, Thomas Monty, will let you know when Godlewski goes to the bench. All the way down the ice for the icing. Central will change. Looks like Schultz on the back end of the offensive zone for the Chippewas went down pretty hard on that last play. He'll skate tenderly off now, we'll go back the offensive zone, left circle, or excuse me, right circle. Draw will be taken in by Gilgren. He got it. Connor Beamish looking to put the pressure to the end boards. It's rimmed around there by a bow. Over the line, cut off by Robertson. Beamish sends it back. Oh, you get some time to change here. Intercepted, Gilgren short side, and he tried to stuff it over the glove. Godlewski kept with it. 
Just over two minutes left in this hockey game. Chippa evades pressure, and Gilgren's down in front of his own bench, getting up slowly, and we got a whistle. Gilgren's hurt. Oh my, Gilgren was just finishing the check on Chippa, and he caught the boards awkwardly just in front of that right gate. He's down on one knee now. Tough to see, a nice dude out of Atlanta, Georgia. 19 games this year, three goals, four assists. Transferred from Purdue Northwest a year ago, their Division I squad. Had some connections to CMU. It was his birthday two years ago, two days ago. <laughs> sure was. Get to his feet now. Light applause by the bench. Well, Devin, it looked like what happened there was he went to finish his check, caught the near end of the skate from one of the Golden Grizzly players. Looks like he tripped over himself after that one and hit his back end of the neck on the bench or on the boards there, which is always a very tough spot. It's very tough to see. And like I said, we haven't seen Nathan Bottles back in this game for a while. Overpool has been roughed up a couple times. We saw Connor Morgan down two minutes ago. And now if you lose Gilgren the rest of this game, he's a great killer. But you only have exactly two minutes to go in this one. An icing by the Chippewas, touched by Monty, and we'll do it again. Well, Devin, you mentioned Rapoon getting roughed up a little bit. Rapoon does not stop. He never stops. He's a mini tank, and he will never give up, no matter how many checks he gets knocked Dare down Dare we on. say the little engine that could? Ah, uh, you know what, Devin? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Will's anything but little, though. I was about to say. He's he, a bruiser. As a 5'6 man myself, I understand the height differential, but you've got to understand this man never gives up, and he will never give up. He's one of the biggest defensive powerhouses of this team. That was over the goal crease on a quick shot out of the right circle by Davis. OU is trying to hem the zone. Godlewski is still in the net to our right. Kept in by Davis at the point. Blocked in front by Robertson. And that one nearly hit the face of Gilgan on that bench, who now gets to his feet, clutching his shoulder. Here's McMillan, stays on side over the line. Drops it back to Fanuf. two players on one. Godlewski still in that net, 124 to go in this hockey game. Central Michigan looking for the upset and an end to their five game losing skid. Matt Fanuf over the line to the left side, drops the trailer back for a shot on net, and Woolery got a piece of that one. Net is off, it's into the netting as well. The upper netting, and we get another whistle. Will Godlewski go to the bench? He will. Six on five, OU will go to their attack for the final time tonight. If we don't for if they don't force overtime, Looks CMU. Like it's gonna be a timeout for the Grizzlies yeah. here, and I mean you're gonna need to set something up here, Devin. If you're the Grizzlies, you're down one to two here at the Marty, and it's it's gonna be very very tough for them to get something off. CMU has played phenomenal defense thus far. We've got a minute left to go, and they're looking to continue that hot streak tonight with the goalie out, Devin. And you have that six on five. You obviously have that man advantage. But something that CMU hasn't let help or let affect them tonight is the man advantage. They've shut down a five on three, a five on four, multiple, multiple times. And here we go again with the six on five. We were thinking about taking an ad break, but we are going to leave it here in general. So looking at the last couple of weeks for both these teams, OU is coming off back-to-back -back series where they've been in the winning ways. They took down U of M Flint in a sweep. Uh, two weeks ago, and then they took down Saginaw Valley State on their ice, 4-3 to three in overtime. Evan Chippa was the hero in that. They tied them the night before, played in back-to-back -back overtime games. They came yesterday with a 5-1 victory over the Chippewas. They led the entire way, as many as 4-0 in that game before Owen Campbell got one late. And tonight, they take on the CMU team where last year Central won 3-1 to one on their home ice. We thought after that first game last year, when they... Oakland won six to three from Buffalo Wild Wings that we would see the more of the same. But just like last year, Central came to play tonight. In the game last year, that's what saved their season. That was what arguably got them ahead of the hurdle to get in the Nationals and stay in contention after they had some tough losses near the end of the year. They've lost five straight. They're looking to avoid six for the first time since 2014. Owen Campbell and Jace Johnson with his first career ACHA goal have given them the advantage. But with 1.13 to go, empty net for OU. They win the draw. It's Brendan Deneau at his own right wing. Cross ice there for Tommy Davis. That got intercepted. It's played up the wall, pushed to the boards by Schultz. He finished his check. Connor Morgan and a race for the puck, and it's kept out of harm's way by Williams. One on one, though. He has to hook cross ice, and there will go CMU's defense retreating. 
50 seconds left in this hockey game. Reese Williams, the freshman of Orchard Lake St. Mary's over the line, stopped at the near corner. He waits for help. The system of all you into play. Trying to get it across for Chippa. It's loose in front of the crease. Woolery's down, and they say he's got it. Jake McCaddy was ready for it in front, and it was one too many touches for him to lift it. 34 seconds to go. A very clutch save by Woolery there, and if that went in, Devin, it would have put OU to another overtime where they've been very successful this year. But Woolery with, a, again, a very clutch save will head back to a faceoff where Nadu has been quite successful. Thus far, he'll take this one. Nadu versus McCaddy in the draw. It's won by McCaddy. Got it back to Williams. Cross ice to Dano. Stick blade by Nadu into the netting, and they're going to do it once more. Devin, 21, or excuse me, 27 seconds away from taking down the number 12 team in the nation after new rankings came out this morning. Nadu again back in the faceoff. He'll dig in one more time. Nadu won that draw. Great job behind the net. See me trying to kill time. Falling down to the ice behind the net. That is Tommy Davis. And they're going to pin this one up on the near corner. 14 seconds to go for CMU to get the upset. 11 seconds now. It's Jay Nadu down there in the corner. He gets taken down by Davis. He's out of the play. Five seconds to go. CMU trying to hold on. Dano with the backhander in front. It's over the net, and it's over. It's over. CMU holds on. They survive. They've done it. They knock off the number 12 team in the nation, and they'll win their first in five. Devin, this was a much needed win for the Chippewas, especially after beating the number 12 team in the nation. You can't be happier for them, and they have no reason not to celebrate after doing such a good defensive job. Oakland could not get a single thing going from the second and the third. Wow, what a game, Devin. And Woolery gets mobbed for that one. The freshman saves 30-plus in this effort. His second time only allowing one goal. The last time it was a 1-0 loss to Michigan State, but he's victorious tonight. 2-1, to CMU takes down a top 16 opponent, and we're going to talk about it and more coming up in the postgame show. The final from this one, 2, CMU, Oakland 1. Stay tuned. Postgame show coming up next here on CCHN.
We're back live for the postgame show following a 2-1 to victory by the Central Michigan Chippewas. They break a five-game losing streak against the number 12 team in the nation. I'm joined by freshman goaltender Caleb Woolery, saving 33 of 34 tonight. Caleb, you had a hell of a game, to put it lightly. You did everything for this team late down the stretch. You saw some action in that slot area. Take us through the final moments. Oh, uh, you know, it was pretty stressful down there. I mean, they, they were applying some pressure, but couldn't have done it without my guys. I mean, we played tough all game. We knew we had to bounce back. Uh, we've been in a slump, but we came together. I mean, that's what good teams do. We find a way. And uh, credit to my guys. I mean, they laid out. They were taking shots for me. I mean, they did everything we could to get that win. So credit to my guys. On to the next. But we'll celebrate this one tonight for sure. Yeah, and you came out firing your first couple of starts. I remember that Michigan State game when you held them to only a one nothing. That was a loss for us. But you came out the next couple of weeks, faltered a bit through Grand Valley, Florida Gulf Coast. We had a lot of goaltending switches. How big was it for yourself to come out here and put together a performance like you know you can do? Oh, it's huge. It's all mental, you know. Like, you, you get down that far. I mean, you're losing some games. You're getting beat on. But, I mean, it's only you're the only one that can bring yourself back. I mean, your coaches can't bring you back up. It, it, starts, it starts in the head. What did so. Brennan Martin tell this team to get them – fired up for this game. I know we've had a lot of tough losses the last couple of weeks, but what was the message today? The effort looked so much better, especially defensively. I mean, we've been working on practice for a couple of weeks now. We've put in a new game plan, a new system, and but uh, really he's been telling us the same thing all year. It's not about them. Who's it about? It's about us. It's about us. we got to focus on ourselves. And uh, so we've been doing that. We've been getting better at our craft and continuing to work, and that's what got us this win tonight. I'll tell you what, it helps having a stout net miner like yourself. You've done nothing but impress, and you're a great character. So thank Appreciate you so it. much. Appreciate thank it very much. Thank you for joining us, buddy. Of course. Go celebrate Anytime. with some ski. In that fire up, fire room. up. Fire up chips. <laughs> Parker Morrison will bring him back here in just a moment for the rest of the postgame show. That was freshman goaltender Caleb Wildery saving 33 on 34 tonight in the win. We'll be right back for the postgame show. Welcome back to the postgame show presented by CMHIceHockey.com. I'm rejoined by Parker Morrison. 2-1 to one victory. This was much needed for this CMU team, Parker, that really needed something good after the last couple of weeks. It was nothing but the other team. And Caleb Woolery said in that last remark before we left with him, it's not about them, it's about us. That's the message that Brendan Martin sparked. How would you rate, first of all, that performance by this team and that netminder yourself? Well, the netminder is just phenomenal. He played phenomenal tonight, and so did his defense. His defense was taking shot after shot for him, putting their bodies on the line as any good defense should do. That's something we've struggled with this year, Devin, and that's something we stepped up on today. But the overall message that CMU has sent out now is, yes, they took a very tough loss at Oakland's Barn. But you come to the Marty now, and we see this multiple times this year. We've taken tough losses at opponents' barns, and we've come right back to the Marty, and we've put a stop to it. And we've beat multiple big teams this year and in previous years in that fashion, and we did it again today against Oakland. It was a tough, gritty win. They lost as many as four players in this lineup. Braden Keel and Brandon Clements went down in the warm-ups, were not able to go tonight. And then throughout the game, Connor Morgan took himself a shot off the ankle. Connor Beamish got a rocket to his ankle, saved that block shot, and then finally at the end here, Josh Gilgren takes a rough hit. We hope all those guys are okay, but they really had to push through it. Let's take you through some of the stats through this one. CMU officially finishes 29 on the shot categories. They capitalize on two. Owen Campbell scores his eighth of the year, back-to-back -back goals on this weekend, and his top line did a great job to assess the puck to him. This time it was a defenseman and Kyle Robertson with his fifth assist. OU would answer, though. In the second period, midway through, it was Tommy Davis scoring with help from Fanuf and uh, uh, getting blanking on. Reese Williams, Jake McCaddy. <coughs> Thank you. you need, we need you more as a spotter over here, Michael. <laughs> Get me out of this seat. This guy will be in here next year, and I hope for a lot more. But, yes, Davis and McCaddy assist on Davis's goal. Then CMU. In the third period, we come in a stalemate out of the break, and it's Jace Johnson, the story of the game, his first career ACHA goal. He does it. He finally breaks that drought he had for five games. We've been saying all along that he was right on the doorstep to get that one. He had so many nice chances, especially yesterday, 
And he comes in on a one-on-four, just killing time, Darren McCarty style, and roofs it through the wickets of that goaltender, Godlewski. He was impressive, and you're really happy for him. Well, you got to realize that when you say one-on-four, it doesn't seem like a lot, but then you actually look at the film. This man passed one in the neutral zone, another one at the blue line, and then two at the end to beat four guys to get to the net, and he was still on his feet. And he got hit by two of those guys. He took cross checks and he from took two a guys he took a in a penalty after afterwards and still the somehow nuts. managed to find the net. And, I mean, for your first ACHA point, Devin, does it really get better than beating four guys on a line change against the number 12 team in the nation? It, it really doesn't. I mean, you got to give props to him in every way possible. Well, you know what's even specialer is I just went down there to collect the final stats, and I saw his entire family there greeting him off the ice, his mom and dad here, his two brothers. A great effort. Lucas Hutton, that's waving us down. Great job by him tonight as well. Uh, just remarkable stuff, and you love to see it for these guys. Invested so much in this team, invested so much in this program get rewarded with a great win tonight. Easily their best win of the year behind their victory over Notre Dame earlier this season. Let's continue on through the post-game show. We talked about the game recap. Let's get to your impact players tonight for Porzondik, Shane Nadu, and Nathan Bottles. How do you think they did tonight? Well, we didn't see a lot of Bottles, actually. We saw him in the beginning and weren't able to see any of him pretty much the second and third period, so we can't say much on that. Porzonic played actually phenomenal defense tonight as yeah. well, more than offense. He was putting his body on the line, diving down, blocking shots, poke checking pretty much every offensive player that came his way and cleared the zone more than enough times to help CMU come to this win, so he played absolutely amazing. And then Nadu won almost every single faceoff that he took, except, of course, yeah. the ones that... An underrated that part of this exactly, game was how yes. many faceoffs they were able to win. You notice a lot of times when they would keep that possession behind their net, they would funnel up the right wing, go to their cycle, and they're out of the zone just like that, and that's something they couldn't do yesterday. And winning faceoffs, as you mentioned, is so huge for this team, and Nadu proved to be so influential in this game, not only defensively, but also, when you win those faceoffs, as you said, you can clear the zone so much easier. And that was one of our keys to the game, Devin, is being able to clear the zone, especially on penalty kills. So having Nadu win those clutch faceoffs, I think, helped them bring the 2-1 to one to Marty tonight. No doubt. And on the other side of things, who'd you have for OU? Well, OU, we had McCaddy, who didn't really play his best hockey tonight. We saw him lose the puck more than once, especially in the neutral zone. He was getting cross-checked. He was getting poke-checked. But... I mean, you got to give credit to the CMU defense there. There's nothing you can do against that. You had Evan Chippa, number 21, who's always played phenomenally for the Oakland Golden Grizzlies. And he did again tonight. Unfortunately, wasn't able to help his team to a victory. Number three, Daru, number, or excuse me, number 11, Daru, who unfortunately, again, wasn't able to help his team to a victory. We saw him get hit more than enough times to put him back on the bench. He took a lot, a lot of hits tonight. And I think... In all reality, when you're roughed up like that, you are not going to play at your best potential for hockey. Yeah, let's take a look at your keys to the game recap. This one was a barn burner. You talked a lot about stopping their forecheck, not allowing them easy entries to the zone. They clogged up that neutral zone heavily for the final six minutes of this game. How do you think they did there? I don't think it was just the last six minutes, although they did do a very, very phenomenal job of that. They clogged it from the second or the beginning of the second period all the way to the end of the game. The first period, they did struggle a little bit. The second period, they unfortunately let up a goal. However, that doesn't discredit the phenomenal phenomenal job that is putting bodies in the way, diving down, blocking the puck. They did tremendous on that. Our second key to the game was clearing the zone. And again, they did just that with the help of Jay Nadu, who won a lot of faceoffs for the guys down on the ice. And then the last one was continue hammering the offensive zone. Devin, we barely saw the chip was on the offensive standpoint. It was probably just by eyeballing it 80-20 in favor of Oakland if I'm being 100% honest, and to have two on a around 20% chance uh, on the offensive standpoint, that is outrageous. If you're a Golden Grizzly, you got to look at your defense and kind of re-correlate, recalibrate with a lot of your guys down there and say, all right, what are we doing wrong? Because clearly yeah. something went wrong tonight. And let's keep the national conversation in this. Oakland came in as the number 12 team. They dropped one spot last night from 11. A loss like this to an unranked opponent in CMU 
hurts their chances heavily in getting to nationals where you need to stack these wins late in the year. They're the ones that matter. Only the top 16 go, and there's two auto bids in there for a couple of conference winners. So if you think about this in the long term, CMU gets a win. They end their five-game losing streak. But on the other side of things, OU has to play some catch-up, and they've got to be big down the stretch if they want to continue on and make nationals this year. Let's take a look at our three stars of the game, presented by CMitchIceHockey.com. They are all Chippewas. The third star goes to Kyle Robertson for his two assists tonight on both Owen Campbell and Jace Johnson's goals. Second star of the game, Caleb Woolery. 33 goals on 34 assists. We just talked to him a minute ago. A resounding win, a good bounce back for him after a couple of tough weeks. He gets the second star. Our first star of the night in his breakout performance, Jace Johnson out of Brownstown, Michigan, gets a goal, his first of his career. It's the game-winning goal, and what an emotional story for him. Now it's the expectation. He's going to put the uh, puck in the back of the net more because we know what he can do. In high school, he was the leader in MHSAA goals all of high school Michigan last year. So he's shown up and he's arrived. With a lot of firepower leaving this year, Devin, you're looking for the younger guys to step up and play in those bigger roles. I don't think you can prop him up more than they did tonight. He beat four guys on a fast break. I know I keep talking about it, Devin, but it's one of the best goals we've seen all year from a Chippewa. And not only that, it was a game-winning goal, putting them up 2-1 to one, middle of the third period, and they just played defensively as a powerhouse for the last 10 minutes there, held off, and they get the dub. Looking forward for this Chippewa team now, Parker. They take on Illinois State next week in two home games at Martin Ice Arena. The Redbirds visit them from the state of Illinois. They're going to travel a couple of hours north, and for this CMU team coming off a win, uh, you've got now six games left in your regular season before the conference tournament. They're not out of the weeds as far as finishing the season. They have had a tough couple of games, but this one certainly gives them momentum. What do you expect out of them next week? Well, not only is it the momentum riding beating a number 12 team, but Devin, it's playing at the Marty for both games. A lot of the teams that we face this year, we've gone to their barn and we haven't played amazing. We look at that Florida Gulf Coast uh, series. We went all the way down to Florida and were unable to get absolutely anything going. I guarantee you if they came to the Marty, we would have put on more of a show. Unfortunately, we're not able to do that because multiple multiple states away but now we go to a closer opponent who is going to play two at our barn that's a huge factor for this team a lot of the guys that we've interviewed on the Chippewa podcast you guys can go check that out on our YouTube and on Spotify as well little selfless plug there for us Devin but you know have to, right? we have to 101.1 the beat remember that exactly but when you come over and you play at the Marty it's a different atmosphere we may not have the entire barn packed every single game we may not have the biggest barn but let me tell you it inspires this team more than almost anything that I've seen this year. An inspiring victory for CMU that looked to continue it on against the Redbirds of Illinois State. Let's look at some out-of-town games coming up for you around the ACHA. Number 16, Saginaw, on the bubble of making nationals, takes on Michigan. That's from Saginaw Bay Ice Arena, slated for an 8.30 p.m. puck drop. Also in action tonight, number 11, Calvin at Grand Valley State. They tied the Lakers last night, one of the only teams to take them to overtime this year. Grand Valley crawling the fifth straight week they've been ranked at number one. U of M Flint is at Adrian, 8 p.m. Eastern. Hope College visits Nebraska at 7.30, as well as Missouri taking on Arkansas, 7.30 p.m. Central Time. What does that mean, uh, Michael? Is that happening now? Is, se is, se is 7.30 Central Time? I can't do the math. Is 7.30 Central Time, yes, it is going on right Yes, it's going on right now. Okay. Then in that case, head on over to the Razorback Hockey YouTube channel where you can find that game. Number 20, Notre Dame, taking on Florida Gulf Coast. Uh, FGCU, we know what they're capable of. And we yeah. know they're going to be a national contender this year. That's going on as well at 6 p.m. The Griffins are visiting the Manitoba Moose. The Spirit are in Peterborough. You can listen to them on a 100.5 100 WSGW. The Red Wings take on the Tampa Bay Lightning tomorrow. Two Tampa Bay teams visit Detroit. The Lions, go Lions, baby. Divisional round, first playoff win in 30 years. <laughs> 30 they get a chance for two. another one. 32 years. Is it 32? Jesus. You know, it's been so long. You, do you even stop counting at that point? I mean, as a Lions fan, it, that's, that's for your entire life, alive. you count of us every time. Exactly. Well, if, <laughs> if we can bind, we've got enough there. But, hey. you know, we'll take the 32 wins. Go Lions. So Tampa Bay comes into Detroit. If Detroit can get a win over both Tampa Bay teams in Detroit, I mean, 
You can't get much better than that. Hey, all let's say is get your homework done so you can watch them tomorrow at there 3 p.m. Eastern on NBC. Thanks again to our equipment staff here at, at Moore Hall Television Studios providing all of the equipment for all of you see on air, on our press stand right here, as well as on the ice, our microphones. We'd like to thank our cameraman tonight, Trevor Weyers. I say it right this time? Wires. Uh, I'm going to get it right eventually. You'll get there. You'll he get was there. one of the most phenomenal cameramen I've seen this weekend. First time doing it right, and you did awesome. So make sure to give him good feedback in the comments. Some of you guys are too negative there. I see you commenting that stuff. <laughs> Let's be positive for him. Great job, Trevor. Our runner and producer tonight was Sam, Sam Tabachinski. Great job running the ones and twos, as always. Michael France giving us the stats and updates and doing the PA stand. We're going to get that goal song on eventually. Michael France, Michael Rosencrantz. Michael Rosencrantz, thank Dad, you. Dad, you got to get this together, man. That's <laughs> three wrong I got, games now. I got six games left doing it. Seven games, maybe <laughs> hopefully eight. I got to get it together. You'll get there. You'll I get will. there. I will. I will. I will get this right eventually. <laughs> thank you, Michael Rosencrantz, for helping us with the there stats. Our next broadcast will be next Friday, January 26th, right here back at home against Illinois State. These Chippewas D3 will take on them at 7.05 p.m. broadcast time, 7.30 p.m. puck drop. And until then, we want to thank you for listening and watching this presentation of CMU D3 Hockey right here on, CM on CCHN as the Central Michigan Chippewas take down the number 12 Oakland Golden Grizzlies here at home to break their five-game losing skid. For Parker Morrison, I'm Devin Sarah saying so long and thank you for watching. Have a great night, everyone.